Eight innings of two-run baseball on just 87 pitches. He was the stopper. Tonight, Kevin Gosman is back, and he gets the baseball. O's and Rangers up next on Masson. It's the Orioles on Masson on an overcast, humid night at Camden Yards. It's the Orioles and the Texas Rangers tonight, the finale of this four-game series. And hi, everyone. I'm Jim Hunter. In Major League Baseball, of course, every team has the same goal. Do whatever is necessary to get a win today. And if you have to make changes for tomorrow, so be it. Well, the Orioles are as proactive a team as any in baseball, always trying to stay ahead of it, in particular to keep the players healthy. Now, if you look at the course of this year, the Orioles are at it again. They made a move yesterday. Yesterday, and they made a move today. Now, coming into today, the Orioles have already made 118 transactions on the year. The Dodgers, the Rays, and the Rangers, the only teams with more. And the Orioles, maybe not quite as many as last year at this time, but still, if they need to make a move, they need to make a move. Today, it was Tyler Wilson going back to get Kevin Gosman here. And what you like about that, as the Orioles, the organization, they have the depth, they have the talent, they make sure they use it. Yeah, and then, you go, of course, you get injuries, and then this year... The lineup not quite as set as it was. Marquez is now playing down Atlanta, so you're trying to, uh, you know, you had the Rymold injuries, you had this. He goes, to, so you're always trying to, and, and Bud doesn't like to play short, unless, of course, it's Mr. Jones, and then they'll maybe go a little bit longer. <laughs> right. So, you know, Kevin Gods is going to pitch tonight, and if he pitches well, probably won't make a whole lot of difference in the, uh, you know, the short term because they'll probably add another one for the Chicago series, going on the road to play the, uh, the White Sox and the Twins. But at the end of the day, Bud. It, it, it's, it started working in 2012 for Buck mm -hmm. Showalter. Uh, you know, they won 93 games. They had lost 14 straight years. It, you know, everybody else, I, it's almost like they've learned from the Orioles. So, uh, you know, even uh, Nick Mark, Martinez, who we saw, he's gone. They're going to bring somebody up. Feliz is now in their bullpen. They'll probably bring him back, maybe give him an extra time down there. So everybody trying to get a little bit of an edge. And for the Orioles, uh, you know, 95, six wins last year, 85, 93. It's working. So the Orioles will send Kevin Gosman on the mound tonight. And if he's gone tomorrow, so be it. It's all about winning the game today. We're coming back. Lineups at first pitch are next. On Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. 
Fans on Utah Street, Birds looking for a win to get a four-game series split to complete the homestand. And here's our BGE home game time temperature, 74 degrees, and that humidity keeps on rising. 68% overcast skies downtown. BGE home is Baltimore's home team for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Why would you call anyone else? So the Rangers trying to get three out of four. Here's their lineup. Odor, Moreland, and Fielder with Beltre in the cleanup spot. Josh Hamilton back in the lineup tonight. He's played one game in this series. Big time numbers career here at Camden Yards. Chew and right, then Andrews Martin and Chirinos the catcher. And Kevin Gosman, uh, second start of the year. A lot of fastballs. Why not? 93 to 99. Two seamer, four seamer, breaking balls, a slider. Doesn't throw it a lot. It's still a work in progress. Uh, when that comes to the front, it'll be lights out, a couple of change ups, one a splitter, one a regular change up. So, again, uh, you know, very athletic, former number one draft choice, 2012 out of LSU. First guy uh, out of that class to get to the to the major leagues. And where every time he is pitched, you can see, I mean, that's got to be an aberrational number because no reason why lefties should be hitting 360. Not a lot of it bats uh, when you look at what he's been able to do. So out of spring training, he was one of the six starters, but he went to the bullpen. Then he had the uh, uh, the arms, the shoulder problem, spent about a month on the disabled list, came back, pitched his last start, and his only start was terrific in Toronto. Gave the Orioles a chance to win, and they did. Didn't get the win. But the, the only problem with Jim, as you know, is that when he pitches, the Orioles usually don't score a lot of runs. Hopefully that will change tonight. So Kevin Gosman back, probably only for today, but you never know. Buck Showalter and NASA, said, well, we'll see how he gets through today. Uh, what the Orioles have done for tonight, Bud Norris will be in the bullpen. This is a throw day. There's Bud, so if he's needed, he would get his side session, if you will, possibly in game action. So Bud is in the bullpen. Kevin Gosman in the rotation. So for tonight, once again, a seven-man bullpen. Here's Odor, and there's a strike. Last night, it was Tyler Wilson who was the seventh reliever, but he's on his way back to rejoin Norfolk, and he'll be in the rotation. Odor, nine for his last 19. Yeah, he's been red hot. They had to send him... The down went down around rock their triple a affiliate five game hitting streak got a couple hits the first night. You know last year the youngest position player in. Major League Baseball at 20 there's a chopper to short. In between hop party guns and he gets it. And one down. Now Kevin Gosman of course has been a, a very effective pitcher in his limited time in the big leagues allowed two runs or fewer in five consecutive starts going back to last September. No decision in all five of those because as Jim points out every night you can pitch as well as you want to. If your team doesn't support you it's going to be tough to win. Yeah 20 starts last year and uh, you know was seven and seven low ERA at three point five seven. William Chen is a poster boy for lack of run support on the Orioles this year. Eight wonderful innings, efficient, 87 pitches last night. Uh, even his record at four and four has pitched much better, but again, not a lot of support when he does pitch. His way in on the bench, he got a big win for the O's last night to snap the modest two-game losing streak. And Moreland will take and two and zero the count. Yeah, we'll see what kind of strikes on. Uh, you know, we had uh, John Hirschbeck called the low strike. Bill Walkie, nobody said anything. John Tumpain was pretty consistent till the late innings. And there's right the there, yeah, there's the. So we'll just see. It's his strike zone. All you want him to do is either hitting or pitching, be consistent. And this one looks like it could have been low, but it's right around the knees. That is James Hoy who has the plate tonight. So each umpire has had a shot behind the plate in this four-game series. That one gets away for ball three. Yeah, that ball ran about. I mean, cut. And a lot of times the two seamer will run left to right, but that one almost like a slider. And Moreland, uh, four home runs in his first two games here. Seven multi hit home runs, all parts of the ballpark. So late on 95. And that's what we saw him uh, against Bud Norris. He was late on 95, except it was two strikes. And there. This is all time in series. Uh, Josh Hamill's back in the lineup. He hit four in one game. That was back in what May of 2012. And then Mitch Moreland, shoes hit home runs in three straight games here. 
And the 3-2 broken back ground ball to Hardy who's in the shift. And he'll get it across the Parmalee. So two ground balls and two men out. Superlative defense here for the Orioles. Low Jones and Davis. Jonesy with four gold gloves. Chris Davis actually playing very well in right field. Machado, platinum glove, Hardy three in a row, Flaherty, Parmalee, Matt Wieters. A couple of gold gloves behind the plate when he plays. Usually, what, 11 out of 14 when he plays. Coming back from the Tommy John surgery. There is Prince Fielder who will take outside. Fielder third in the American League in batting. He's at 342, 12 home runs, and tied for eighth with his 49 RBIs. He and Chris Davis of the Orioles each with 49 RBIs. Yeah, so we had Manny, what Manny uh, Machado for the Orioles ended his 12 game hitting streak. Fielder's nine game hit streak ended last night. Takes on 2 0, and it's right there. A fielder. He's had a very good all around year. He has 103 base hits already. That is second most in the league. Only Jason Kipnis, who the Orioles saw last weekend, has more. And there's another one. You can see why he came into this series with the most multi hits. And he is not a pull hitter. Very conventional, at least uh, in, in that count. I mean, they're straight away, and he still hits it. So, I mean, he just blisters this ball. Boy. Just lets it travel and drops the head of the bat on it. And then, of course, he had, he's only, what, hit two home runs in his last 21 games, and you're kind of lucky that he hit that ball hard enough. If he elevated it, probably would have gone out. A two out single gets Beltray up. You know, there are his numbers five for 13, double three runs. Hit that double right down the right field line, wall scraper. And Kevin gets ahead. Yeah, the breaking ball, and we, if you were with us when we opened, it was 9%. That's his slider. So some nights it can be a little sharper than others. Hard hit ball towards Hardy. He gloves. He'll flip the Flaherty. There's the force on fielder. And Gosman gets out of it. So base hit and one left. We'll head to the bottom of the first. Here come the birds. Youngster enjoying baseball. No score. Here come the O's in the bottom of the first. And a look at the O's starting lineup brought to you by Southwest. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. Machado Paredes, Adam Jones in the number three spot. Career hitter in July. How about 33 home runs and 112 RBIs? Davis, Wieters, and Parmalee with Hardy at short, then Flaherty and David Lowe gets the start in left field. Yeah, then this lineup uh, has their work cut out. Uh, the 29 year old right hander, Giovanni Gallardo, born in Mexico, lives in Fort Worth, now playing close to home. And he's working on, what, 23 and a third scoreless innings. Nice mix, fastball slider, keeps the ball down, ground ball pitcher, and, and coming off his, uh, there are the records, seven and six, very low ERA. 
one of the highest uh, percentages of fly balls to ground balls. You can see 54% keeps the ball in the ballpark. And of course, this will be a challenge. And you now I watched some of the Toronto game. He, he went up to Toronto, best hitting team in baseball, and three hit him, eight and a third innings. So if he gets the ball off the corner, which that one was right there, he's going to be very tough. Throws the ball downhill. So those are that's where he's trying to locate. And again, one of the uh, you know you, you, you look at what he was able to do in Milwaukee. Just played all his career where 89 and 66 with the Brewers, and they. They let him go. It's his walk here. Pops it up to shallow right. And here comes Chu. And he'll put it away. Manny retired for the out. So you talk about having a month. He's another player who was sorry to see June in. Lowest DRA of any month. Giovanni Gallardo, 0.54. Only Nick Martinez, who picked here last night and had the great April, a lower ERA. And the ERA over his last seven starts is 0.99. And that is lower than anyone. You got to go back to Charlie Huff in 1984. So outstanding numbers for Gallardo. And then in the National League, he was also a home run hitter. Now I asked his pitching coach, Mike Maddox, I said, so, you know, I saw him pitch. I said, why is he so consistent? He said, because he throws the ball downhill. They give you a 10 inch mound. You know, you stay on top and throw the ball down. Popped up foul out of play. Beltre is over. And he's going to run out of room. And that's a foul ball. Braves as hot as any hitter in the lineup. Yeah, he kind of changed the game last night in the, the respect that uh, the Orioles were working on a shutout. And Nick Martinez is going to coast in a long 2 0. A couple of solo runs, home runs for the Rangers. And then all of a sudden he got him on the board. Blasted one the right center, which is not unfamiliar. Boy, he's been hot. Doesn't matter, lefty or righty. And there's a little cutter. Takes it. Didn't even uh, begin. The one thing you know that this Oriole team, Scott Coolbar, the new instructor, everybody kind of has an idea of what he's going to try to do. Now, whether they can do something with his pitches, there's another good breaking ball. And they'll tray over again. We'll run out of room. That one a little closer. Well, for Gallardo, this is only his second career appearance against the Orioles and the other was just last year when he was in Milwaukee. The Orioles played the NL Central in the interleague last year and that was on May the 28th and he did get the win. He went six and two thirds. He allowed three runs two coming in on a pair of Nelson Cruz solo home runs. So only the second start in his career against the Orioles. Look at Paredes is home and away numbers. The Orioles are going to need that as they head on the road. Only 16 and 21 away. 2-2 two, two is low and a real good take. Ball three. Well, Jimmy Paredes, uh, you know, obviously you really have to scuffle. It is so difficult. League average usually around 170, 180, 185. Last year was the two strikes hitting with two strikes. So you got to hit everything and breaking balls, hard, soft, you name it. Uh, but until then, he's done a terrific job of hitting his pitch. There's another little cutter, just a little cut fastball for movement. But well, Jimmy's fouling him off to yeah. prolong the at bat. So Gallardo, Jim told you, born in Mexico, and then he, his family moved to Texas. He graduated high school in Fort Worth and was drafted by Milwaukee in 2004. Real luxury to be able to pitch for your hometown team. And the 3-2 on the seventh pitch is low ball four. And Paredes gets on with one down. Yeah, he really earned that. Take a look at the defense behind uh, Gallardo. Hamilton back in the lineup. Coming off the DL with a hamstring. Martin, Martin, excuse me, Chu, Beltre, Andrews. Uh, of course, Andre Beltre, uh, Adrian Beltre, four goal gloves. Andrews, Odor, Moreland, and then uh, the catcher, the home run guy, Torinos. <laughs> had a hanging slider the other night. Actually had a couple of good at bats against Miguel Gonzalez. Here's Adam Jones. You see four for 12 in the series. He does have an RBI. Batting average at 295. This is a big, big game for the Orioles. As they're trying to split the series. But what it also would do was give them a 5-2 and two homestand. And that's what you strive for. You strive first to win series. And then you try to win homestands or road trips. Uh, whatever it happens to be. Well, the other part of it is they lost the first uh, two games of this series. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you're facing their best starter. 
So again, uh, he doesn't walk a whole lot of guys. You know, two, one, three, one, two. I mean, the most you got to go all the way back, and that's into early May when he walked four. So he's around the plate. You know, he's not a guy that throws 95. He just mix ups his pitches, and that was his pitching coach Mike Maddox. And then the ability, at least through the last seven games, to throw the ball downhill and stay out of harm's way. Adam fouls it back two and one. Yeah, that's your hittable pitch, and you know it's 90. It's thigh high away, and Adam's going, boy, that's a pretty good pitch to hit. I just fouled it off. Now, Gallardo is seven and six, despite an ERA of 2.72, which is sixth best in the league, and that's because he had lo losses in four consecutive starts, April 22nd through May the 8th. Here's the 2 1. Hit toward second and right through the legs of Odor. That ball was blistered and Odor couldn't glove it. Adam thinks about going to second, holds on there. Paredes ends up at third. Well, they'll probably score that in error because it went through his legs, but it was a bullet. You know, that's a double play if you catch it. Otherwise, it's first and third. I mean, this is just a skidding rocket. And of course, it is the big leagues. They're right there. You know, he just wants to make sure it's not a line drive. It was hit so hard, and then it skids through Runed uh, Odor's legs. We'll see how they scored. It's an error. Yeah. And he made one the other night, and it did. It, the Orioles would end up losing eight to six to Colby Lewis, but it was 15 extra pitches for Colby. But that was a tough error. So first and third, one down, and here is the red hot Chris Davis. Hard hit ball, line drive right to Moreland, and that's going to be a double play. Tough break for the O's as it was hit right at Moreland. Well, to the second at Camden Yards, no score. in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. Kevin Gaussman making the start for the O's tonight just his second start of the year. His prior start was on June the 20th a no decision in Toronto but he pitched very well. Five innings just two runs allowed. He began the year as Jim mentioned in the bullpen and was with the Orioles through May the 6th. And then he went on the DL May the 8th with that right shoulder tendonitis. And when he came back from there after the start in Toronto, he was sent to Triple A. He was option, and he made only one start there, three innings, which was by design, so he'd be fresh for tonight. And here is Hamilton, and he'll take strike one. Yeah, a couple of base hits to left field the other night, and then off the disabled list, hamstring, left hamstring problem. Check swing and it's a ball. That's almost like a curveball. And I'm, it'll be kind of interesting to see if he actually throws it. He, he had a curveball in college. And the, 
the uh, the breaking pitch is the pitch that has been the most challenging for him. And, and I've heard a lot of theories that you know pitchers can throw both the curve and the slider or some. Say well, you no. can. It's just so hard to have them both the same night. At least for me, it was. And I mean, you could have them. They may not. One might be better. That's why it's nice to have both of them. But he's usually favored the the harder. With the harder breaking ball, but that one was almost like the hook. Foul back. So I guess that check swing did hit the bat. So the count is one and two. Oh, for his uh, his birthday, his 23rd birthday, I actually uh, tweeted him that I was giving him John Smoltz slider as a birthday present. And fouls it off to stay alive. But he didn't know it was really me when I tweeted him that he was getting Smoltz a slider because it's <laughs> it's all over if he could. He can come up like a, a just a really good slider. John Smoltz, of course, getting into the Hall of Fame, had one of the best ones. And oh, he got him. There's a fork ball changeup. So the ball just, I mean, it really it just explodes down and away. You get the two strikes. You can see uh, Josh Hamilton. Uh, he used left field so well, but he's going to expand it because he just gets fooled. Ball looks like it's going to be around the corner. Look at him split his hand, and then it tumbles down and away. Trying to be able to reach it. Couldn't do it. First strikeout for Kevin. Sinsu Chu, who has homered in three consecutive games. So he'll live here feeling good about it. He comes in even with these series. He's just 11 for his last 61. That is a 180 clip. Fastball blew it by him. Well, Kevin Gosman's got the most velocity. Uh, you know, Bud Norris can get up there at 94, 95. The two seams, and yeah, he gets it up there like a number one draft choice should, don't you think? Weak ground ball into the shift. There's Flaherty. He'll get Chew for the second out. Our Maryland Life Casino inside the numbers, and there's the fastball velocity. Yeah. Or Gosman at 94 point. I mean, and that's his average fastball. So he'll fluctuate. Some days it'll be 92. He'll add. You never really know when it's going to happen, which is a good thing. So he's able to add something. Averaging 95. It's a tick under. The two down. And Gosman now goes to work on Elvis Andrews, about to make his 25th pitch. Elvis Andrews was signed originally by Atlanta out of Venezuela and then as a minor leaguer was traded to Texas. He was part of that big trade with Mark Teixeira going from Texas to Atlanta. And he has become the Rangers everyday shortstop. He's already in his seventh season and he won't turn 27 until the 26th of August. This one deep down the line in the corner. And making the catch and banging against the wall is David Lowe. Outstanding concentration by David Lowe. Yeah, let's see if he's all right. He has such great speed. He actually gets to it pretty quickly, and then the wall gets in the way. But he braced himself, hits the pads, tumbles to the ground. So Gosman has a three up, three down inning, mid second, no score.
American League, and he just made an outstanding play. Yeah, a little more room down the left field line here at Camden Yards, 333. So he able to get there, and then the ensuing uh, collision with the wall catches it, and then one step. Uh, 315 to right, 333. That ball hit the right field. Might have been some serious trouble, but he made a uh, potential double into a great catch. Here's Matt Weeters. He'll take ball one. Weeters, Parmalee, and Hardy against Gallardo in the second. Matt at 268. This is his 18th game since coming off the DL. Ball two. Yeah, lefties uh, don't hit. Gallardo's as well as righties, 222 to 235. A few more home runs. Five by the left handers, two by the right handers. Not a bunch, though, in your 17th start. Hard hit ball. There's Odor to his left. He will turn and throw, so Weeders retired. And one away here in the second. Maryland Lottery's contestant of the game, Nicholas Allen Jr. of Westminster, has won $500 for being selected and will win $500 more for every Orioles home run hit tonight. Play baseball bucks scratch offs and win up to $50,000 or enter non winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game. Visit mdlottery.com slash baseball. Chris Parmalee now, one out, nobody on. And on a strike. Parmalee four for 18 on the homestand. He does have a home run and two RBIs getting a chance to play pretty much every day now at first base with Chris Davis taking over right field. Here's David Lowe on the Orioles bench. His strength on this team is his defense and he showed it there. Yeah, another little cutter slider. Gallardo. Four and two at home three and four on the road. So his splits are reversed. In the ballpark in Arlington is not exactly a pitcher's paradise but. For some reason he enjoys it there I guess because he's home. Well, I can tell you right now, I mean, right there, I think Chris Parmley thought he was going to get a fastball. He got a changeup. Another little cutter. Peel, no swing. So this is a, 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 what, he's 89, 90, maybe 91. Cut it. Change up, in and out, up and down. The master of changing speeds, adding, subtracting, you name it. And very comfortable. I can't imagine he'd have a problem pitching anywhere. They just don't get him a lot of runs. 3.56 runs when he pitches. 3 2 is swung out and missed. Got it by him. And that's a high cutter. And, you know, Chris Parmley's a much better low ball hitter, and you just get fooled. And, you know, you think it's going to stay in the middle of play. Watch it just come in just a little bit. Now it's ball four if you take it, but you think you can hit it. And hard to get on top of that high cutter. Almost that slider spin there. You know, that's a little cut and you know maybe it was a backup slider that's one of the one of the more effective pitches if you can get it in. Here's JJ. And he'll take a strike. So what are you saying that with the cutter it's just where you place the finger on the stitches you hold the ball a little bit off center off center, and then just throw it like a regular fastball pull down on it. No slider usually you rotate it a little bit. Maybe you'll have a little different grip with the with the seams. Two outs, nobody on, no score. And JJ takes ball two. The Texas starters have done a real good job. Their combined ERA is 3.84. That is fourth best in the American League. There's a weak ground ball towards second. Odor waits on the hop. He'll retire Hardy, and Gallardo retires the Orioles three up and three down. Through two at Camden Yards, pitcher's duel early on, no score.
veteran on the left, Manny Machado, the youngster on the right. Here's a look at our Jeep inside the numbers through the first 367 games of their respective careers. So let's see. Uh, Adrian's won uh, four gold gloves. And then Manny won the platinum gold gloves. Good defenders. Of course, Adrian, uh, you know, it, the longer he plays, the more people start talking about the uh, Hall of Fame caliber numbers he's putting up. And he now has 401 home runs. He is fifth of the active players on that list. Yeah, he came out. I mean, when we saw him come out of the National League, he went up to Seattle, signed that what four or five year deal. And that's such a hard park to hit. I mean, he had 25, 26 home runs. Didn't really think much of it. And then he went up to Boston, so we get to see him play what 18, 19 times a year, and all of a sudden, high average. You realize how good a fielder he is. You already kind of knew that. Oops. Late time requested and granted. Yeah, Kevin Gosman was ready to go, and mm -hmm. team, what he wasn't even getting his hands up. But he's in the box, and the umpire does not have to grant it, but they do probably 99 times out of 100. And that won't change until a pitcher is injured by not realizing time is about to be called. Well, you're right, but I think also. As a pitcher, you do have to respect that the guy's ready to hit. I mean, if he's if he's just stepping in and you're winding up, just outside ball. If three. you understand what I'm saying, I mean, right. there's a, such a fine line in between that, and of course, the umpire could put his hand up even prematurely if the guy's starting to wind up and the other guys, you know, the, the batter's just getting ready to hit. And right there for a strike, three and two, as Martin was taken all the way. Well, he's a speedster. He's capable of stealing 30, 40 bases. So he says, okay, I'll make Osmond throw a strike. And Kevin was able to do that. Yeah, and he walked him. And then he slipped. Looked like he slipped. Looked down. So a leadoff walk, leadoff man on for the first time tonight. Remember, the voting ends tonight at midnight for the 2015 All Star Game. So now's your last chance to vote for Manny Machado, Adam Jones, and the rest of your favorite Orioles for the AL team. Get online, vote now, Orioles.com slash vote orange. You could earn ticket discounts plus the chance to win an autographed All Star Game jersey. You can vote up to 35 times with each valid email address. So if you have several email addresses, you can vote up to 35 times on each. So vote orange, Orioles.com slash vote orange. Strike one taken by Robertson Chirinos the catcher. Yeah, so the walk and as we mentioned Martin uh, 31 got caught 12 times the year before 36 stolen bases caught nine. So now if you're Jeff Bannister and you manage this club. And uh, you figure maybe Gosman will be tough to run off. He can start the runner. He can try to do something to maybe it'll open up some holes. Well, Kevin tonight is in his 50th major league game. And it's his 27th major league start. And for his career, there have been eight steals against him, and the Orioles have caught four. Yeah, and that's a above the league average. Well, one bunt popped the foul back of the plate. That was about the 10 for a base hit with Manny deep at third. Yeah, they always do it one strike. If, if you do it, 0 and 0. Then Manny would at least come in now. He'd go back and play exactly where he was. Now, if you get it down, it's good. It's just the hole in 10, of course, is number one, I guess, to get it down and beat it out. If not, at least have the third baseman come in. But 0 oh, and 2, you know, he's not bunny. I mean, he, off of Miguel Gonzalez, he did homer. He did hit a single to center. And this Torino does have a little bit of power. Veteran player now 31 out of Venezuela. Gosman's ahead 0 and 2. Just missed outside. Yeah, and Kevin can throw 97 very easily. I mean, it just doesn't. He doesn't really put a lot of effort into it. Well, what about six, three and a half, six, four? But eventually, when he has a slider, that's going to be a great strikeout double play ball. And he gets to tilt on it. And there's a splitter. That's another way of striking people out and getting the ground ball. And maybe he watched the slider that Torino's hit off of uh, Gonzalez. 
Dave Wallace looking on. Came uh, over to the Orioles last year, along with Dom Chidi. One and two on Chirinos with Martin at first. And he got him. Fastball, he couldn't catch it. But Chirinos is down on strikes. There's number two. Two strikeouts for Gosman. Yeah, it takes a little pain out of the uh, leadoff walk. I mean, high rider, 96. Four seam fastball. Got two of them. Two seamer and now four seamer. Try to catch that. And he literally swung when that ball was by him. Great angle to show you that. Ball just exploded on him. And Kevin came into this game in his time in the bigs this year with with Ned Odor standing in. 17 innings and 14 strikeouts. And that's pretty much right on his career averages. He's averaging 7.6 K's per nine innings. So very much a strikeout pitcher. Yeah, his stuff is going to strike you out. <laughs> it's that good. And the prescription goggles. Odor grounded out his first at bat. Slaps it foul the other way. Yeah, they don't really play Odor, even though he's slapping him over their dugout. I mean, Adams maybe maybe he's going to move over. I think maybe Wayne Kirby's going, okay, come over a step or two. I mean, here's Adam, and he was right about there, and now he's moved over. David Lowe. The only reason maybe you play a step to the line if you're David Lowe, maybe another step closer to the foul line, is because the ball is going to slice away from you if he hits it down here. Knocked down by Gosman. Odor fell down. Safe at second base, out at first. Well, you know, you talked about it the other night, and uh, it's a double play ball. You got to know how hard it's hit, who, where you, Hardy's playing. So that's a huge break. It's only a huge break in the sense. I mean, this is a little bit tough play to watch him. Has to come back and catch it. Really nice effort, good throw. Except Jay, Jay Hardy said, "I better get it one, one out." And right here he goes down. Now, of course, Kevin doesn't know that. He's already trying to pick the ball up that he deflected. But they do get a runner in scoring position for one of their hottest hitters. So a tough break there for Gosman. We asked Buck Showalter about that yesterday after it happened to Miguel the other night. He said it's just instinct. He said there's no way you could tell a pitcher don't try to catch a ball as it's going by you. If he catches it, he can start the double play. But in each of the plays in this series, the one with Miguel and that one, had the pitcher let it go by, Hardy was waiting there. Yeah, you have to tell sometimes when the ball. And and I mentioned this the other night. Sometimes it's hard to tell if the, how ball how hard the ball is hit, especially if it's a line drive. You know, you may get it up on the bat, but ground balls are a little bit easier. And that ball didn't was not hit very hard. Made a real good pitch down and away. Roller towards first. It'll kick foul. And that's why you will see, invariably see, not all the time, obviously, you will see pitchers actually take the glove out of the way because they know, they know the speed of the ball, they know their where the defense is. Kind of like base runners, you know, with two outs, it doesn't really matter, but with less than two outs, you're always looking around to see where they're playing, especially when you're in scoring position. And then you have to read the bat up, the ball off the bat, and make your determination. Well, one, two on Moreland, runner at second with two down, and a foul back. Buck was saying the best pitcher at doing that, pulling the glove back, right now is Mark Burley. And well, he's a veteran. Yeah. <laughs> and he throws a lot of ground balls, and he's. When Mark Burley finish is his windup, he's very much like Jim Cobb, who won 16 straight. He's in a position to become a defender. Perfectly balanced. 0 and 2 on Moreland. Fastball sails outside. Yeah, Jim Cobb would throw it, and I mean, one year he broke his finger sliding into second in June, and still won the Gold Glove. That's how good he was. But he would say, "Okay, I'm ready. Hit it. Take your best shot." Because he was in a position to feel. And Moreland goes down on strikes, and Gosman gets out of it. Texas will strand the runner at second, mid third at the ballpark, and no score.
Massen is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by visitannapolis.org. Find the Chesapeake experience at visitannapolis.org. So you'd like a, an Oriole hat, and I would recommend going into that store here at the ballpark. There's a, a few choices there. A lot of orange around the ballpark tonight. Yeah. Tonight is a dugout club game, so a lot of youngsters here. I have to get a uh, license plate before the summer's over. You should have acted on that. Why? I mean, you, you should have gotten number 22. No, 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 no. Not that. I just wanted an Oriole. You mean to uh, yeah. put on your vehicle? Or put just on a car. Oh. <laughs> no, no. Carried around on my wallet. No, of course I. Uh, yeah. For uh, your Maryland car, which no, that would Florida, have to be. Florida, Florida. So car. you'll have a Maryland plate in Florida. Which means you'd have to register it here. No, no, I'm just going to put a Oriole <laughs> license plate on my car in Florida okay. that is registered in Florida. High fly ball to right field. Going back on it is Chu. At the wall, he will make the catch. Ryan just missed it. Big swing. So one down here in the third. It's now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag O's Couch Cam. And you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. It's all brought to you by T-Mobile. And that gentleman may have been doing it right there. Well, Flaherty is retired. Yeah, I'm, I told Ryan, I said, every day you're becoming, you're starting to, you know, big wide stance. I said, just lean back a little more. You're starting to look like George Brett. And then he almost homered to the opposite field. And then he almost hit a home run right there. Swinging better. So Gallardo pulls out the curveball here in the <laughs> third inning. Very crafty. We always talk about left handers being crafty lefties. Crafty right hand. Towards the middle, there's a base hit for David Lowe. So that's how you snap an 0 for 12. You get a pitch that you can handle and you don't miss it. There's still time to get on board and experience the drama of the second half of the season and save on ticket prices at the same time. Here's what you do. Pick up your 2015 Birdland Summer Six Pack. Choose any six games for the remainder of the season and enjoy savings up to 20% off the cost of the single game tickets. And you can build a plan. Whatever's perfect for you. Great games, division games, popular promotions, whatever you prefer. So get online. Check it out. Orioles.com slash six pack or call 888-848-BIRD. Now remember Gallardo's working on 25 and two-thirds innings scoreless baseball. And he lines it foul the other way. So low gets on doesn't steal a lot of bases one out of five. But a ball up the gap and. The Orioles are going to probably do something not guaranteed but certainly a good chance of it if other teams haven't been able to do. A lot of room in right center and has good pop that way. You know, the last time he gave up a run was in Oakland. And that was back on the 10th of June. Many moons ago. He also has 47 and two thirds consecutive innings without allowing a home run. David Ortiz took him deep on May 19th and that's the last time Gallardo lost a game. Well, you're probably wondering if you're sitting at home how did they <laughs> were able to acquire him. Walk year, free agent year. Orioles have 10 of them. There's his manager, Jeff Bannister. They gave up three young players for him. Probably makes a nice little salary. We'll make a nicer one next year. Yes, he will. Line drive, base hit to right field. Softly hit, but Odor was shading up the middle and double play deck. Yeah, you got to make perfect pitches to get Manny Machado out. If you get the ball up out over the plate. And uh, for Gallardi, he's lucky because it was hit right at Odor, who's not a big guy. He doesn't have any chance to get it, but you don't want to get doubled up. We've already seen that one time. Adam Jones got doubled up on a rocket that Chris Davis hit right at Moreland at first. So the O's have something going here. Well, you think you do. You just, you just don't know against this guy. 213 with runners in scoring position numbers. That's, in other words, every, that's the batting average when you have a guy at second or third. Paredes. Yeah, look at Paredes number. 457. Yeah, that is the best in the American League. 457. Bouncer to first. 
Moreland bobbles the ball, picks it up, and gets it to Gallardo to get the out. They thought about two, bobbled it, that cost them the chance, so the runners move up, and now there's two down. And Gallardo did what he had to do, he got over to cover. Yeah, a little cutter, and Mitch Moreland just said, okay, it's going to be a tough throw because of the angle of the runner. You know, he's so far deep, but by the time he gets it, I mean, you could see Manny so he's halfway down there, and of course, once he fumbles it, he can't get the the interim runner. You know that Lowe, with great speed, is going on his way to third, and probably a break for them if he gets Jones out, if he gets Adam out, that he didn't throw that ball. Okay. And here's Adam, a chance to get the Orioles on the board. Reached on an error his first at bat. He hit a smoker that went right through the legs of Odor at second base. And Adam Jones this year, Jim, uh, the contact without a doubt has improved. Well, he said, uh, you know, what, what what good do I do when I strike out? I have no chance of, you know, putting the ball in play. So I don't think he's really. I just think his approach is better. I don't think he's tried to swing softer. Maybe take the ball the other way a little bit more. We saw that. Over the weekend. Change but, up. But yeah. it doesn't mean that he's still not going to air it out early in the count. I just think he's done a nice job. Obviously with two strikes if you miss strike three that's when you get the strikeouts. And we saw that what three four years ago when he started using right field a little oh, bit more. Absolutely. And, and, the, be, and the willingness now to do yeah. that. Ball and a strike on him. Yeah that's ooh, he doesn't get the call. Wow. It's been a strike before. And pitch track had had it off. The oh plate. no! I would, but what I'm saying is he's been, he's been right. getting oh. that pitch on occasion, and then he didn't get that one. So two and one. Outside ball three over three. Yeah, I think you make a decision here. You don't want to walk Adam Jones, but you will walk him because of the circumstances, and then you'll deal with Chris Davis. You, know, you get a feel for a game when you're a starting pitcher. You know, it's early in the game. You know, Gosman, the guy that you're pitching against, even though you're you're really good pitching against the Oriole hitters, doesn't get a lot of runs. So he's going to make the perfect pitch or not. Yeah, check swing and he hit the ball hit the bat. Yeah, a little cutter and just something other than a fastball. Adam upset the ball must have been sailing outside for ball four. Well, just a little cutter or slider. It looks like a cut fastball, and it's not going to give in. He, I don't know if he's thrown a fastball in the middle of the plate. I mean, we're only in the third, but he's been right on the corner or not. Make sure that it's away. And yes. Now, of course, he'll throw anything. Second and third, and two down, three and two on Jones. Gallardo, and Adam protects that outside corner. To be the seventh pitch in the at bat. Yeah, and when when you haven't pitched against hitters, you can watch all the film in the world. I mean, if you're Giovanni Gallardo, you're going, okay, maybe I have to set up to go up and in. But can I really do that? Because if you do it and you miss, it's a three-run home run. There's another breaking ball down away. So everything away, 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 away. See him. The, the clock is ticking out there. The mind is whirling around, going, "Okay, now what?" Look at those pitches. And they what, seven of them off the plate. Three and two on Adam with two down. Gallardo steps off, mm -hmm. and Chirinos, who loves to make visits to the mound, will go out. Well, this also is somewhat a yeah. I mean, you haven't, you haven't get your, you know, closing in on 26 innings without giving up a run. It's a nothing, nothing game. He's fouled off three or four balls just off the outside corner. And better, you and your battery mate better be on the same page. Jeff Bannister, former catcher. Well, Gallardo ready now, three and two. High fly ball right field, slicing down the line and fading back foul. 
Yeah, the master of the outside corner. I mean, this is what you live for if you're a pitcher. And Adams just saying, please just bring it in a little bit. Maybe I can make better contact. But to his credit, it just keeps flicking them foul. And this is why it is so difficult. Again, uh, you know, the full count is three and two. You know, 214 actually is probably 25, 30 points higher than most hitters are with two strikes throughout Major League Baseball. And another 3 2 is yeah. inside ball four, and he walked it. They had, when so he did come in, he went way in. He's thrown 18 pitches this inning, nine were in that at bat to Adam Jones. And here comes Chris Davis, is our American standards. Who's hot, who's not? Yeah, so Elvis Andrews in this series, one for 13. Chris Davis comes in. Those are uh, the numbers over the 11 game hit streak. A couple of home runs the other night. You know, he's hit the ball to left center. Always like that. Hit into a, a line drive double play, but just hit a singeing rocket right to Moreland at first. Our American Standard, who's hot, who's not, celebrate the season with the American Standard All Star event. Visit MidAtlanticComfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. Bases loaded, two down. Ground a foul behind Wayne Kirby. Yeah, they try to pitch Chris in, and the way that Giovanni Gallardo is going to do it just with cut fastballs. That's what he hit right at Moreland. Shifts on. Martine is maybe four steps into right center. There's your center fielder, and right here. This is a strange shift. Well, they're straight away and left, and you just figure if he's going to hit it in the air, and fouls it back. Pretty good pitch to hit there. The curveball that stayed up got away with it. That's a ball that Chris has been hitting when it's up to left center. Well, you could run forever. You see the power zone up and away. Outside to well, the, the outside half of the plate. Take away the inside quarter. That's not where he likes it. But then the the outside middle. You get in a lot of trouble if you're a pitcher and you leave it there. Gallardo's ahead 0 and 2. Upstairs. Chris had a rocket line drive his first at bat. It was first and third and one down. Adam Jones was on it first after reaching on the air. You know it's the same ball now even though Moreland's playing him the pull. I'm not sure he could catch that ball because he was right on the bag. Mm -hmm. you know, that ball was hit so hard and it was right over the first base bag. One and two. And he got him. Ball gets away. Chirinos will throw to first and just in time to get Chris Davis. So the Orioles strand the bases loaded. I don't know why Chirinos didn't just step on home plate. He decided to go to first. Everyone looking around to see if Buck's going to challenge that. And he's out. Got there just in time. So the Orioles miss an opportunity leaving the bases loaded. We'll head to the fourth. No score.
Newport Norfolk Tides, who will be heading to the AAA All-Star Game. Daryl Alvarez, Steve Clevenger, Michael Bowden, and Oliver Drake. Alvarez, 26-year-old, one of the top prospects, Jim, he also has been asked and has accepted he'll be in the home run derby before the uh, day before the AAA All-Star Game. Well, so. they're still talking about his ability to throw you know, out of Cuba. Of course, Steve Clevenger always seems like he can hit. And is Mike Bowden, uh, didn't he invent years ago pitch with the Red Sox? Yes, yes. same guy. Yeah, and then Oliver Drake, we saw him up here. The master of the splitter working on his fastball command. Here's Fielder against Gosman, and it's outside. And when uh, Dan Duquette visited with us yesterday, we talked about the move designating for assignment Delman Young. He talked about the depth that they have not only here, and obviously this roster is loaded with outfielders, but uh, the outfielders coming behind, and uh, Alvarez was the first one he brought up. So you wonder. Trying to connect the dots if sometime later in the summer, Mr. Alvarez might be here. Well, he had a great spring. Uh, obviously, the, the defensive abilities, great arm. And, but what they liked was, and he started out slow this year at Triple A Norfolk, he, he, what they liked was his dis plate discipline, something he didn't have last year. Showed him over the four or five weeks. Task here, second time through the, the, the order. Prince Fielder hit a BB left center for, for a base hit the first time. And there's a perfect pitch. Even if you're looking for it, you just don't want to swing at it. It's too good a pitch right on the outside corner. Kevin Gosman, slender, 6'3, 190. And there's a base hit the other way. Hardy was shading up the middle. So Fielder has two base hits in this game, both opposite field. Here's a look at the Orioles upcoming schedule brought to you by mile one automotive offering you 20 convenient locations throughout the Baltimore area. Visit us in store or online at mile one dot com. Well, big three game weekend series coming up in Chicago. Birds will pack it up and head to Chicago tonight. Eight o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. Then Saturday on the 4th of July a day game two o'clock Eastern time Saturday on WJZ as well. And then Sunday on Masson again at two o'clock. And then the Orioles head to Minnesota after that. And come home for a day off before playing the Nats, and then it'll be the All Star break. Yeah, the Twins, uh, big surprise team. I mean, in, they're in a division where Kansas City is playing as well as anybody in the American League, but they're 25 and 15 at home. So, big ballpark. Well, when the dugout, or at least the camera well, looking fastball, got fastball, and yanked it. Kevin Gosman recalled for this start. And we're not sure what move will be made after the game. What Buck Showalter has said is the organization wants Gosman to remain in a starting rotation. And if that's not here, obviously that means AAA where he can continue to pitch and stretch the arm out. Yeah, he's he's got to get enough innings because Chen's a free agent, Norris is a free agent. Bundy shoulder problems not even pitching you're looking to the future has to get if especially if you're going to be a good team enough innings where he can pitch really a full year and it's hard to do that still young yeah. enough at 23 and not enough innings at the major league or even the minor league level to do that he, plus he's good <laughs> you know and then there's that I mean, he's, <laughs> he's real good. Two and two on Beltre with Fielder at first. And he struck him out. Yeah, well, you could see the, the what you have, I don't know if we we'll go back and see this uh, swing, but because we can do anything because we, our truck can do it all. But look how he, he really takes his hand off. He, he's been having problems, and boy, this ball rides up and in. And in the left wrist, and it's almost like he, now I couldn't get to a great pitch. And then you just kind of wonder how well. There he takes the left thumb off. Had a donut, you know, donuts are kind of protective thing. He took that away. And then he put a brace on it, talking about Adrian Beltre. Trying to play through it. Didn't even rehab. That's amazing. Sprain left thumb. 
Josh Hamilton struck out his first at bat. Gosman now with four Ks through three and a third. Just outside. So the move today to get Gosman here and having Bud Norris available in the bullpen. So Bud is the seventh reliever tonight. So the question going on the road trip is does Kevin go back to bring up yet another reliever or does Bud stay in the bullpen and Gosman in the rotation. There's a lot of as Buck likes to say moving parts because they do have options but. Uh, he made it or Dan Duquette made it clear when he visited with us yesterday that the, the team is more comfortable with the seventh reliever. You don't want to be undermanned. In the well pen. who it is though that's the question. Now the one thing to keep in mind is that when Delman Young was designated for assignment yesterday that opens up a 40 man roster spot. So if there is somebody at triple A or double A for that matter that the Orioles feel can help. They can add that player to the 40 man roster and bring him up. And the one two is a little low and he didn't chase. Yeah it looked like he had a pretty good idea that 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 splitter was going to split and. So we saw Gallardo just stay on that outside corner. Kevin Gosman he's way over on the uh, third bite side so his best angle is really. Right there. He got him to chase again. So Hamilton down on strikes both times and I mean it's just a darting diving splitter. And he thinks it's going to be over the plate <laughs> and it just keeps running away from the bat head. That looked exactly like the pitch she struck out the first time. Well right but. It, when you're sitting in the dugout or the stands or at home or even up here you're going well how did he swing at that ball. If he thought it was going to end there. He wouldn't have swung. That's what movement does on pitches. You know the deception factor. And the fact that he's got good, you know, he's got a great arm. That's why he was the fourth round pick in 2012. You know, he's got good velocity. I think the ball moves a little bit more down unless he rides it out of the zone. Check swing, appeal. He went. Yeah, that's a double if you make contact. <laughs> I mean, that's a. But yeah, I mean, he stopped the bat, but it's the umpire's what he's looking at. Uh, John Tumpane down at down at third is how far the bat traveled. And then also he's seen him hit three home runs in this series, so he knows he's got power. One two, and he struck him out. What was a fastball by him at 97. So Gosman allows a leadoff single to Prince Fielder, strikes out Beltre, strikes out Hamilton, and strikes out Chu. Texas leaves a runner, no score.
Field will contribute $50 to support the March of Dimes. The O's have drawn 195 walks for a total of $9,750. Carefer's Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and a more active lifestyle. Lovely night. It's muggy. Well, the sun's coming out. I mean, it's interesting you know, sky. Yeah, the sun as the sun sets. It's finally. Now, Weeders fouls it back. Yeah, he doesn't leave too many balls in the middle of the plate. I mean, he right there, it looks like you have a good swing, but it is right on the corner. The 41% fastballs, the, the breaking kind of cutters, sliders, and the, he's mixed in a few change ups and a couple of curveballs. Down and away, one and one. Mac grounded out his first at bat. Buck is asked every day in his pregame briefing with the media when Matt will play back to back games since he's come off the DL and this was what the design was is that he would catch every other day and Buck said that's between Matt and Richie Bansells. <laughs> there is Richie with Buck and Buck said it's not like he goes up to him and says hey Matt is this the day is this the day soft liner to left center field oh, and yeah. Hamilton thought that Martin was yeah. going to call him off. <laughs> and he recovers and makes the grab. Well, if you, you, you're Leonis Martin, you don't be running into Josh Hamilton. But he is the center fielder. And the ball's slicing towards Josh, but he's coming off the hamstring. He's looking at him right there and they go, I'll get it. Of course, he did play center field. He actually, when he's playing with uh, Texas, he would run into fences and all that kind of stuff. So they moved him uh, to left field because he wouldn't get hurt because he was winning games with his bat and he wasn't winning games when he was on the DL or hurt injured. Parmalee takes a strike high strike outside strike. All of the above. Chris struck out his first at bat he's four for 19 on the homestand so he's cooled off a bit. You know, we're talking about the now 119 transactions since the day before opening day when is the day the rosters need to be set. And the other one to keep in mind is Jonathan scope. Now, Jonathan tonight is in a game at Frederick a, a rehab game Brady Anderson and Jonathan drove over to Frederick. We don't know how long he'll play in the minor leagues of course they always could option him to get more at bats but. If that happens, yet another player would have to go off the roster. So, well, that's coming. As long as he stays healthy, he will be back on this roster at some point because I know Buck Walter. I think people that saw him play initially this year, even last year, struck out a lot, but tremendous second baseman. I mean, Ryan Flaherty's an admirable job, and he can play anywhere. But, and I guess the question you ask. When you get a guy like Jonathan Scope coming back, are you a better team with him or without him? And they'll make that determination. I don't know what Buck thinks. He would like to have him back in the lineup because he, he has a chance to be a very special player. And he has that home run pop in his bat. Well, he can turn the double play as well as anybody. And Sky to left. Andrews out. Hamilton in. Hamilton's going to call. And he's got it. Two men down and two fly balls to Hamilton. The O's are back home next Friday, July 10th, as a fan favorite returns to Oriole Park. First 20,000 fans, 21 and over, at that game that night against the Nats will receive the Orioles' plaid floppy hat presented by Miller Lite. So add this to your Birdland summer wardrobe. Tickets are going fast, as you would expect with the Nats in town, and of course, floppy hat night. So get online, Orioles.com, or call 888-848-BIRD. Two down for Hardy. And it's outside. Yeah, I was looking. Uh, they both talking about J.J. Hardy and uh, Novani uh, Gallardo. They were teammates for a couple of years. J.J. coming up with the Brewers. Some great years. Torino's make that ball back into the strike zone, but didn't get the call. Hardy grounded out his first at bat. And there's strike two and one. I mean, the, the, the perfect 2 0 low and away fastball to get back in the count. 
Yeah, JJ was with the Brewers. Gallardo came up in 2007. Nine wins, 13, 14, 17, 16, 12. And then last year they got him three point three runs a game, and he was eight and eleven with a minuscule ERA, three and a half runs a game. Well, Milwaukee also gave him a six-year contract to buy out all the arbitration years, and that's the deal you talked about. It expires at the end of this year, so he's a free agent. Three and one. Line foul the other way. He just doesn't give you a whole lot to hit. I mean, even when he gets behind. I mean, he's never really been very wild. 192 innings, 54 walks. Maybe earlier in his career. One year he actually walked 81 and 204 innings, but the master of hitting the corners. And the 3 2 is grounded towards short. Andrews charges. And he'll retire Hardy, and the Orioles go three up and three down for a second time in this game. Pitcher still in control, no score. Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. How about we uh, Miller time with some defense? Well, uh, again, a nothing nothing ball game, and uh, here we are in the fifth inning. But earlier in the game, right there, David Lowe off the bat of Elvis Andrews chases it down, gets to it about a step from the wall. We said many times, Kevin Gosman says, "Thank you very much for the pad the walls." Yeah, one of these games, a couple of hits for both clubs, no runs for either one. The Rangers, Odor, had hot smashed by Adam Jones, went through his legs, and then the line drive, uh, double play off the bat of Davis, got Gallardo out. One of those games where leadoff batter, you know, maybe the bloop double. Always kind of have those in the back of your mind. So very important to get the leadoff batter on, make it a little bit easier as you. Andrews who hit that ball that low ran down he'll lead off then Martin and Chirinos. Two hits allowed by Gosman both off the bat of Prince Fielder. Oh, lazy pop up. Hardy's out low is charging in and JJ calls him off. So a two pitch out. As Andrews pops up to begin the fifth inning. Those fans never miss a game update, behind the scenes moment, or exclusive contests. Just follow at Mass and Orioles on Twitter for all the latest Orioles buzz. Again, that's at Mass and Orioles on Twitter. As Jim Palmer does. Yes. Ball low. I was too. Uh, I actually missed doing it today because I was making sure that the uh, Buck Gnome. I had to make sure he was packed for the road trip. Bunt goes foul. You know, when, when the when the Orioles are what 16 and 21 on the road, the Gnome has to be the in the Gnome booth. has to make the trip. Cushion. He likes to 
And he'll be traveling, uh, you know, Delta Airlines first class tonight. I mean, he's really looking forward to this trip. <laughs> Chicago, 4th of July. Are you giving up your seat for the gnome? No. no. <laughs> Not a big gnome. I don't so, know if you so you'll have your, your trade table out in first class with the well, gnome. I don't know if I'll be, if I'm next to uh, Kevin Buck, mm -hmm. who takes care of all the travel for the Orioles, then I won't be able to buckle him in. Otherwise, maybe <laughs> Kevin will. <laughs> I love you with the ball. You better be careful. He's looking forward to this. If, if, if the skipper sees the gnome, you may have an ex gnome. You're right. <laughs> two and two. You may want to wait until the booth tomorrow night. And well, what, are, what am I going to happen? You know, the little pouch in front of you, you'll have the, the magazine, the Delta magazine. Oh, yeah. and oh the there you go. Air sickness bag or whatever <laughs> it is. You can hide him somewhere. And he got him. Great, uh, great splitter right there. You get back and, you know, a good enough fastball to speed up the bat, and then you drop this pitch off. Trying to. What the, the speed. Once again, two seam splitter. All really tumbles over your fingertips. And that's how you get the downward rotation of the ball. Which, But you don't see it if you're the good ones. Now, the ones that stay up, they get a little bit more hittable. Yeah, that was a strike till it wasn't to the hitter. Chirinos. Struck out his first at bat. This time he pops it up. Foul ground, third base side. Manny is there. And he squeezes it for the out. And Gosman has a 3 up, 3 down inning. Six in a row retired. A Mazda do ups for the Birds. Flaherty low and the chop. My fishing partner Jim Palmer. I have two who words. Is sporting the <laughs> floppy hat, the plaid yeah. floppy nice hat, look. to give away for next week. I have two words. Well, actually, yeah. four words. Where is Mike Porter? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, and Mike, uh, he, he modeled the, the fedora. He went to, oh, did he? Uh, yeah. The last year. Well, he's on vacation yeah. with his family. Is uh, you'll be on vacation yeah. after this road trip. I'm taking this. Uh, maybe this is how, this is how we're going to hide the gnome tonight. I'm taking oh, this with me okay. on the plane. Look, bring the floppy hat with the gnome and. Uh, hopefully but, the Orioles have a game win. here. Gallardo now what 27 and a third scoreless innings. Uh, the Orioles trying to figure out a way. I mean, he's hit a home run. It's not that hard. Come on. Of course he doesn't throw home runs. So maybe it is it's difficult. But uh, and if you'd like to look like Jim Palmer. It looks July better. July 10th yeah. this floppy hat night. I need a larger here. floppy hat. Well if you didn't have your headset on it might have fit. Ah, there you there go. You go. I didn't go to Seton Hall for nothing. Flaherty flied out his first at bat, just missed yeah. a home run. Yeah, had a it did have a home run swing, just got under the shape. Another one to right field. And she was one. back on this one. Yeah, got yeah. under this one too. Just a shade out of the zone. I mean, you want to be aggressive, and he was. Another one a little bit closer because he pulled it a little bit more. 
A 2 0 -oh, good fastball hitter and you could see just what at, what at the letters. Mm -hmm. But a nice aggressive swing. I mean that's the way you want to swing the bat 2 and 0. Oh. And that bounces in there to David Lowe. And outside. Yeah, last night's game, at least for the Orioles, uh, they hit a couple of solo home runs, Rua and, and Chu, and then Paredes got the Orioles started with a solo home run. Strike at the knees. Yeah, it's about, about as good a fastball as you're going to get the hit. We saw that up, I remember up in Boston where he hit the three run home run, talking about David Lowe, and he took a 3 1 pitch. Everybody kind of groaned. They, he said they groaned in the dugout. He hit the next one into the bullpen. Good take. So if you watch films uh, and Giovanni and, and especially his pitching coach Mike Maddox, they know that David Lowe, his home run power is a little bit like uh, Alejandro Diaz, inside, down, thigh high. They're going to try to go away. Now to the first. That's a fair ball. The race is on, and Gallardo gets there just ahead of David Lowe. And two men are out. On Sunday, July 12th, O's and Nats 135. First 20,000 fans, 15 and over, received the Orioles Hawaiian shirt. So make your summer even hotter by adding this island favorite to your wardrobe. Good seats remain for that Sunday afternoon battle of the beltways, but they are going fast. So get your tickets now. Get online, Orioles.com, or call 888-848-BIRD. Now you're going to miss Hawaiian shirt night. We'll have to get you one to go with I your hat. I think I'm missing floppy hat night too. No, but you already, you already, already have your hat. Your, your Jim Palmer. It's a good looking hat. So six in a row retired by Gallardo. Since he struck out Chris Davis to end the third when the Orioles left the bases loaded. 76 pitches. So somewhat efficient. Wow. Just just enough away. To not quite be able to get to it. Manny the last time got the same pitch but that one was a little bit more of a strike and he hit it over Odor's head and just to right field. Yeah, we've seen him if you make a mistake out over the plate just take it either off the scoreboard or over the scoreboard in right center field. And then if you try to come in and don't get it in I mean this is what happens when you become a good hitter. That ball goes into the left field seats or gets smacked down the left field line. One and two on Manny. And a pitch that misses inside. Machado batted for the 382 clip over his last 13 games. Had the hitting streak snapped last night at 12. Two and two on him. Towards right center field on the run is Martin. And he will get there to make the catch and the out. And back to back three up three down innings. Orioles have gotten in order three times in this game. Through five, no score.
Andrews bidding for extra base hits, but David Lowe there, great catch down the left field line here at Camden Yards. And then right here, a couple of base hits, a walk, and then Chris Davis with two strikes, the big curveball ends up striking out off Gallardo. And then uh, change up. Hamilton goes down a couple of times. Chu can't get to the high fastball. Seven strikeouts. Those are your Geico game highlights. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free rate quote. Well, a lot of youngsters at the ballpark tonight having a good time. Brother and sister there. Curveball. So it is a curve tonight. But it's not the slider. Very pitch efficient for Kevin. A little bit low. So our door, he gets sent out since then coming in because he's 0 for 2 tonight. Almost hitting 400. Center field chasing Adam Jones. He was playing shallow, and that's going to get over his head and get down and get all the way to the wall. Odor is heading the second. He's thinking three. Here's the throw from Hardy to Manny. He is out at third base. Oh, what a play. Perfectly executed relay, and Hardy got it to Machado for the tag. You know, he can really run, and of course you play shallow because you don't think he's going to hit it over your head, but when he does, here's your spring training. You know, Adam, no chance of getting it, but watch him go get it. He picks it up. Right there, hits the cutoff man. And when he does, watch this throw. Perfect tag. And the Cardinal rule never make the first or the last out at third base. Oh, yeah, he and is now. He does. Glove down. Nothing, nothing. Game's going to, he's going to stay that way for a while. Perfectly executed. But Showalter talks all the time about the importance of being able to tag and says J.J. Hardy's the best maybe he's ever seen. I'll tell you what, man, he's learning. Well, I'll that tell you was right great. Now, that he was made a, such a good throw, Jim, that all you had to do is catch it and drop the glove. And, you know, and then it got to, you know, in the new age with uh, replays, you just sustain the tag. Tagology, I guess, is what uh, threw out that in Boston. I don't know where that came from. But the new tagology is to hold the tag. Is that a... Saber metrics term? No, it's not. It's Jim Palmer. JP term. <laughs> Moreland swings through the fastball. So instead of a runner at second and nobody down in the scoreless game, and there's the combo Jones to Hardy to Manny. Well, how about Adam catching the ball? I mean, before he even got to the wall. Mm -hmm. A little urgency to nothing, nothing game in the sixth inning. There's another fastball looking first. Maybe the Josh Hamilton splitter. Three gold glove players combining on that out. Well, it really, it seemed to me it started all the way back in Boston uh, when Chris Davis ended up went pitching in the 17th inning. Is if you go back to that game, and that was 2012, how did they even get to the 17th inning? They threw Marlon Bird out on a double up the gap in Fenway Park, and Hardy made the relay throw. Readers made the tag. Just those little things, and that was the year that the Orioles what won 16 consecutive extra inning right. games. Weak ground ball to short. There's Machado in the shift. High, but Parmley comes down on the bat. Yeah, Moreland doesn't really. It's so routine that he doesn't run hard, but there is no such thing as routine. I think it's going to be. I know it's a long year, but it's 90 feet. Sprint every time you're on the field. As if it's a bang bang play and Parmalee's in the air as he gets to the base, he's on base. So two down, here's Prince Fielder. Hard hit ball. Hardy plants the long throw. The scope, he is safe at first base. Well, the only way he's safe is if he came off the bag. And you know what Buck uh, Showalter was talking about is that, uh, you know, what he does. Is he comes and gets the ball. So I think they're going to get a replay here, folks, because the foot stays on. So is still on the bag. Oh, yeah, he's out. Yeah. So Buck is going to challenge. Yeah, as he should. He was saying he goes out and gets the ball. And when the ball's in the glove, the toe is on the base. So go get the glove, Mr. Rangers. That's definitive evidence. Now, whether they see it or not, 
Ball in glove, toe on base. They were running hard. He's out. Fans are applauding the. Well, look at Parma. I mean, this is one heck of a draft. Oriole players are coming off the field. They saw the replay well, on the scoreboard. You know what? I, I, I'm not sure I'd do this. Even though yeah, this is coming from New York, it's not coming from the umpires here. That's right. But wait to if, if they don't reverse it with what they just saw on the center field diamond vision. People are not going to go crazy, but there's going to be some serious noise in this ballpark. Hirschbeck on the left. He's the crew chief. He made the call. Bill Welke is the other more senior umpire, so they always have to listen. And here is the verdict. He's out. And that will end the inning. So the replay got it right. The call is overturned. We'll head to the bottom of the six. Nice play by Parmalee to keep this game scoreless. Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Coons.com. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. And by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. Concourse here at Oriole Park. Fans enjoying their refreshments. And the Orioles now will look for a run. Yeah, so the scoreless scheme for Mr. Gallardo, now at what, 28 and a third innings. How about this number after losses and they did lose. Eight starts, six and zero with an 0 88 ERA. Two runs or less than all of them. That's a stopper. Seven and six record on the year, low ERA. Parmalee and Chris Davis talking about that scoop at first base by Parmalee and the toe work, which was just as important. Yeah, you think you can hit that high cutter and you can't quite get to it. Just in enough underneath the hands of the lefties. Of course, out over the plate, it becomes a little different story, but he doesn't throw it there. And two and one on Paredes, Jones on deck, and then Davis. Got a nice mix right there fastballs and cutters and sliders and change ups and curveballs. Center field that chases Martin and he glides back on it. Boy, does he know how to time a ball? Mm -hmm. One away as Paredes is retired. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Orioles. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Well, you're seeing every indication why Jeff Bannister, the new manager of the Rangers, wants Martin to keep playing center field. And the ballpark down in Texas even bigger. Yep. And go get him. What did that Adam Jones had? What about what 10 pitches? Mm -hmm. The last time to walk eventually pitched right around him. He finally got tired of throwing balls away that he kept fouling off and tried to come up and in and 
but nothing on the inside eighth of the plate. I mean every ball either on the corner or off so far except the one way 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 inside. Line drive right to Moreland at first. So two men down that's nine in a row retired by Gallardo. It's now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo using the hashtag O's couch cam and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast all brought to you by T-Mobile. Come on fans. Get involved in that Gallardo is certainly involved in this one. So nine in a row retired Jones the walk Jim just talked about that was the last Oriole to reach and that was in the third inning with two down. Here's Chris Davis. And it bounces in there. So it's a modified shift for Texas. They have Odor well out in right field but. The shortstop Andrews there he is up the middle he's closer to the bag than we usually see in these shifts. And he lays off the high heat to an oh. And Peel he did not go. Yeah Chris is. Uh, Chris is hoping to shift one into the flag court here. I'm right center field. You just don't you look at the scoreboard if you're pitching. And I can't imagine that he's going to give him much to hit here. And but not that Matt Weeder's on deck can't do damage. It's just you, you really choose in a nothing nothing game two outs when you know he may not know he has you know, Chris has 11 game hitting streak and in a red hot. I mean hit him over 340 with four home runs and all that stuff. But he knows he's hitting. You know, he just pitched around it. Four pitch walk. Yeah, I mean to choose. This is not being wild. It's just being prudent. Where do you want to pitch to? So the Orioles get a two out base runner that snaps the string nine in a row and retired by Gallardo and it gets Weeders up there with a man on. Yeah you go through the uh, lineup when you're looking at it and you go okay I don't want this guy to beat me. Got to get this guy out because then I can pitch around that guy. And I think that's what Gallardo is doing here. Now that doesn't mean it always works. Because all you got to do is have. Chris Davis runs pretty well for a big guy. Weeders takes a strike in the outside corner. Well, Davis red hot with the 11 game hitting streak. Mattis now one for 10 on the homestand and just four for his last 27. So if you look at Martin, if he gets any deeper, he'll be almost over the center field wall. And he's trying to cut off the ball in the gap. And a little bit late on that swing, and it's 0 and 2. Yeah, I mean, he's way out there as he should be. Keeps looking back over his shoulder, make sure that. I mean, everybody very deep. This is your double prevention defense. Oh, and two after the four pitch walk. If Torino's got any farther out, he almost would have been in their dugout. I mean, he just kind of went. He almost went into the middle of the right handed hitter's batter's box. That was kind of a okay, I'll waste one out there. And it was so far off the plate, that's what it was. And maybe I'll try to get him out with the cutter in. That's his pitching coach, Mike Maddox. Doesn't chase the changeup. Two and two on Matt with two down. Yeah, I get the feeling that after watching Matt Weeders hit now for what, six years. He can guess with the best of them. If he takes a look, you know, he may be just the guy. You know, gonna get up three, four, five times tonight. Maybe look inside middle. That's he's been throwing so many cutters and oh, and he's out of first base according to John Hirschbeck. He was leaning, looked like he was gonna go, and he's picked off by Gallardo. Horrible base running because you know you're not gonna steal the base. And then he just holds the ball. That's one of the reasons. We're waiting to see if they're going to challenge. Rangers are coming off the field. Buck's still waiting for a word from yeah. the. Well, he gets back really quickly. And Buck will not challenge. So Davis is picked off to end the sixth. So two out walk but none left. On we go to the seventh in a scoreless game.
And here we go to the seventh. First ball swinging his belt tray. Machado deep. He throws. He got him. Yeah, and he made it look easy. You know, a lot of times a uh, tie ball game, you play the line. And I never liked it because what if they hit a ball to your left? I mean, he's way off the line, but he's got shortstop range. Get the feet planted. Accurate throw. Farmley can pick it over there. Way off the bat, it looks like it might be a double. Not. No chance. Not the no chance defense. What a start for Gosman here. Yeah. Well, he's had real good command, and uh, I mean the, the fastball in the middle of Plato door hit over the head of uh, Adam Jones, and a couple of singles to the left by Fielder. There's a base hit for Hamilton. I mean that's what that's the way you have to hit him, and made a living trying to do that and it's, it's really about fastball command uh, you know and you have a really good arm and Kevin Gosman has that and you locate well that's all Josh Hamilton can do it really cuts down on the ability uh, to be able to generate a lot of power Freeman and Keller uh, so you got uh, two hard throwers we saw Keller a couple of the first two nights he's in the mid 90s as is Freeman, 93, 94. Gallardo. Sun Tzu Chu with a runner on. Good throw to first, chases Hamilton. Yeah, there's always, I suppose, as uh, Darren O'Day for the Orioles will get loose, always a chance that he may run, but coming off the hamstring problem, maybe a little doubtful. Fastball misses outside. Gosman has seven strikeouts. He has walked only one. That was a leadoff walk in the third. It was eventually left stranded. I think the key to keeping uh, somebody like Hamilton, for a big guy, he really does have good speed, is make him stop. But worry about the hitter because he has hit home runs in three games and the ball just a shade low. And these are the counts where the hitters look to ambush you a little bit. He stayed out of the middle of the plate so well. We've seen Chill Chew homer to left. He's what three home runs, a couple to, to right field. Keeping him close. But if you're not going to steal a base, dude, you just can't afford to get yourself picked off here. And Hamilton knows that. His job is if Chu can chew one into right field, can he get a good enough jump to get the third base? Oh, perfect pitch again. Great velocity, great movement, fabulous location right to the glove of Mad Weeders. The reason he chases off the plate is because it appears it starts on the plate and then the movement just takes it out of the zone. It's a pretty special ability to have as a pitcher. Well, two and one on Chu. 
Hamilton a modest lead. Inside, ball three. Yeah, pulled that change up across the plate. Now they put the shift on. And of course, J.J. Hardy telling everybody where, what their uh, responsibility is on a ground ball. I mean, if the ball's hit the Flaherty, uh, Manny Machado will be taking the throw at second. And he's one again. Too far and he's upset with himself. Well, Jim, that's what 95 does here in the seventh inning. You got to get the bat started. He's he established his fastball so well in this game. So we'll see if Bannister will risk sending Hamilton here three and two with one down in a scoreless game. Now this is where you hold the ball and then you throw over. He does not run in a foul back. The reason you hold the ball and throw over is just in case he maybe you can get him leaning like you, they were able to do with Chris Davis. The Rangers have had two men reach second base in this game, but one wasn't around long. That was Odor who doubled and was thrown out trying to stretch it to a triple. Three and two on Chu. Runner does go. Pitches. Ball four. Weeders thought he had strike three and threw down. Yeah, and he stayed down in the zone. A lot of times you'll come up and you know, it's a splitter that Chu is able to lay off of. Just a tad low, and here comes Buck Showalter. And this, if he does make a pitching change, and he usually does that, it's not about the way Gavin Bosman, it's about the pitch count. Well, of a game tonight. Yeah, so Gosman will leave. He cannot win, he can lose, and Darren O'Day comes on in the seventh. Five starters win a lot of ball games. Seven strikeouts. Use all his pitches. And again, uh, it's going to leave without a chance to win because of the lack of offense. But marvelous performance against a team that came in and hit what 11 home runs the first two nights. So there it is. Four hits over the six and the third innings. A lot of fastballs. And now our Jiffy Lube uh, pitching change. It's time for a little relief for your car, too. Visit Jiffy Lube for regular oil changes that help prevent damage and wear to your engine. Jiffy Lube, drive in today. And here's a guy that's, look at that, 5 0. Oh. Cleveland series, last time he worked. Gave up the, the home run to Santana. That was in the Chen game. Marvelous numbers. Uh, again, the fastballs, sinkers, risers. Front hip breaking balls, and uh, again you're trying to match up here. O'Day against Andrus, one for seven. So looking for a double play ball, and that's hard to do only because of the fact that Elvis Andrus, pretty speedy guy. You see, right, he's only hitting 132. O'Day has picked up wins in three of his last four appearances, including the game Jim just talked about after. He allowed the tying run. The Orioles got the lead and he picked up the win. 
I think that fooled Andrews. Well, you just you just don't see guys throw from this release point, and hitting's about that little window of where the ball's coming, and then you think it's going to be on the corner. It's a little slider. It just keeps going, 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 going. You wave, 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 wave. I mean, it just happens. And as a hitter, you just try to pick it up a little bit better, maybe try to time it, and then he throws you a fastball. And it's blown away, knee high. What would you say? I think Darren O'Day is, and this gives you total read on velocity, what, maybe 86, 87 average fastball? But it's a movement, and he can, he can sink it. He can throw you the upshoot. This is where he likes to go high in the zone. And he got him on a breaking ball. Big strikeout. Andrews is out two away. Now you're trying to stay back. You're trying to let the ball travel a little bit. Wait, wait, wait. And if you don't pick it up, right about here, you're what you look, the hips are already gone. So the breaking ball outside, and Andrews can't reach it. And two down, two on. Leonis Martin, watch out for the bunt. Yeah, well, I was thinking of that because he tried to bunt, but with you know potential go-ahead run, you don't see it very often. But if he does drop one down, I mean they're going to give him that. They're going to make sure that that he doesn't hit a ball by him. If you're an infielder, you try to knock it down, and maybe not a, that bad a play. To get Odor or actually to get uh, Chirinas up. Martinez walked. He has struck out. He is 0 for 2 against Darren O'Day. There's Gallardo. Looks like his night might be done with double barrel bullpen activity for Texas. Yeah, just get me some runs. One. One. I'll take one. There's the high heater at 88. Yeah, then you got a young hitter in the sense that he doesn't have a lot of experience, and when you get a count where you don't have to throw him a strike. In fact, it would be a mistake if you did. And of course, Darren O'Day knows that. One and two on Leona Smart team with two on and two out. Popped him up, shallow center right there is Mr. Jones. O'Day comes on and strands two runners. Outstanding job by Darren O'Day. Two left, seventh inning stretch time at Camden Yards. Our Honda do ups in a scoreless game. Weeders, Parmalee, and Harden. Six-game road trip. We hope you can join us. The first stop at the White Sox in the Windy City. Valdo Jimenez will take them out against John Danks in game one. Our coverage on Masson 2 will begin at 7.30 with those extra presented by Jeep. And then game coverage at 8 o'clock. We've got all the access you need right here on Masson. 
Thompson. So Giovanni uh, Gallardo runs his scoreless streak to 29 and the third scoreless inning. The master of deception. Boy, he pitched well tonight. And again, I mean, you know, not overpowering the sense. He just knows how to pitch, cutter, and everything. Nothing much to hit. So marvelous uh, job. And uh, third time we've seen Sam Freeman. You know, right at the end of spring training came from the Cardinals over to the uh, the Texas Rangers. So 92 to 95 mile per hour fastball, little slider, and a very good splitter. And he's been on a roll. He retired all six batters he's faced in this game. And then uh, over the last 14 games, ERA have given up what uh, three earned runs in nine innings has dropped almost three points. So he struggled early. You can see lefties actually hit a better than right-handers. And Abel, Matt Reader's probably a better hitter, at least average wide from this side, will uh, come in to face Friedman. And this is outside 1 0. The Orioles in this game have just two base hits and they came in consecutive at bats. David Lowe and Manny Machado with one out in the third. They've had five base runners as Gallardo walked three. High fly ball left center field, but he got under it. There's Hamilton, and he's got it for the out. So a loud out, but one away. The player design t shirt series is back at Oriole Park on Thursday, July 30th. All the fans at that game that night against the Tigers will receive a glove Orioles t shirt designed by gold glove winning shortstop J.J. Hardy. So celebrate the Orioles shortstop and add to your Birdland wardrobe for your tickets. Orioles.com or 888 848 Bird. There's J.J. on deck. So I will be there for that t shirt night. So you're, you're really. Well, I, got, I got my floppy hat. We're going to mail you the shirt. Parmalee first ball swings and pops it no, up. I'll be here for the shirt. No, the Hawaiian shirt. Oh. <laughs> you got to match your floppy must, hat. Must you? <laughs> yes. Oh, they match? They go? I, I believe so. Platt is the, the new in. That was like when you used to wear Madras and stripes. You know what a Madras shirt is? No. You don't even know what a Madras shirt is? I, I wasn't at that meeting. Oh, Jimbo. <laughs> they don't have those in the New Jersey. When you go home tonight, because I'll be on a plane to Chicago. Google Madras. I, I will. Was that big, like in the '60s? Or? Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe even the '50s. I don't know. <laughs> Hardy takes one of on the count. JJ has grounded out twice tonight. Texas has the 14th out of 15 bullpens in the American League, highest ERA, but you wouldn't know it by the not, way they pitched lately. Series. Yeah, they've gotten a lot better. I mean, part of it, I mean, if you're Sam Freeman, you look at his stuff and go, all, all you got to do is throw some quality. I mean, he's got three real good pitches you know, plus arm, plus splitter. So relax. You know, you got to learn, you got to get your innings in, you got to get the experience factor. Bounces the fastball in. Torino says, throw it by me. I'll snag that ball. It's a good looking uh, catcher behind the plate. Torino. We were talking about the other night. I thought he was going to play for Tampa Bay, and they had, he missed that whole year with a concussion like symptoms. But he can pick it. And two and two on Hardy. Two outs, none on in the scoreless game in the seventh. And then he foul tipped it in and out of the glove of Torinos. Yeah, if you look at the, he really does give a good target. He gives you the low target. He moves well. I mean, look at that. I mean, he's down there. I'm trying to think of uh, who's the uh, backup catcher who's now with Pittsburgh uh, in New York. Now they're starting catcher. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Francisco Cervelli and a swing yeah. and a miss yeah. at the splitter. They almost said, I feel like they're shortstops catching behind the plate. So three up, three down for Freeman. O'Day going back to work in this scoreless game.
Jack Dosher making his debut with the Cubs becomes the first son of a former major leaguer to also play in the bigs. His father Herm, a third baseman with Troy, Chicago, and Cleveland before the turn of the century. And then in 1963, at 1231 a.m. in San Francisco, Willie Mays homered off Warren Spahn in the bottom of the 16th inning. That gave Juan Marichal a 1-0 win in the National League's longest game ended by a home run. And Warren Spahn, they both went the distance. One of my great stories when Mike Flag and I believe been broadcasting. Rick Dempsey was a was a coach for the Orioles. We were out in San Francisco playing Oakland, but went back to San Francisco. It was a card show. Juan Marichal said, "I didn't know Flanny grew up in New Hampshire, a Giant fan." Really? Yeah, I used to always say if I ever met Willis Mays, I wouldn't have been able to talk. And Mike was, <laughs> as you know, not the you know not a shy guy, great sense of humor. So we'd go to the card show, and I said, "You know, by the way, Mike, we're going Flanny. We're going to dinner." So I get him actually to sit next to Juan Marichal, and he's not eating much because <laughs> he's so excited. And then I get Marichal to talk about that game. Juan Marichal threw 227 pitches. Wow. And uh, Al the doc with his manager, and he kept saying, you know, you're only 22. And he said, I'm not leaving until that 42 year old guy leaves. And that was Warren Spawn. And of course, uh, they went to Warren Spawn and they said, uh, hey, I think that's enough, Warren. You're, you know, you're over 40. He goes, I'm not leaving until that 22 year old kid. <laughs> So Marichal the 227 pitches and then he said you know it's the only time I ever got an extra day off. And Spahn pitched 16 innings only I think struck out two people in that game. Now that's control. If that happened today uh, the manager and pitching coach would be indicted. How, how many pitches 200 227. Yep. They said Alvin gave him an extra day. <laughs> an extra day <laughs> extra day's there rest. You know <laughs> Uh, and back then it was four man rotation. Well, yeah, well, you know, it's funny, and it, it's, it's a great day because we, we see Giovanni Gallardo pitch today. He's got 29 and a score, third scoreless innings. He's a pitcher. You know, we saw Gosman come out and just, I mean, he, you know, this is, he'll eventually have the feel. I mean, he had a tremendous feel tonight. But Gallardo, if you went down there and you're a scout, you're going other than the fact he got him out. I mean, does he throw 95? No. He's exquisite. Control, mix it up his pitches, add and subtract, in and out, hardly anything to hit. So maybe that's what went on in that 16 inning game. And Chirino's battling here, two and two. Check swing at a high fastball. And for Warren Spahn, maybe the key was to pitch around to Willie Mays. Of course, waiting on deck would have been Willie McCovey, another Hall of Famer. Well, Chirino's about to see a seventh pitch in this at bat. Scoreless game leading off the eighth. Line drive to left. Low charges in on it and a diving catch for David Lowe. What a game he's having defensively. Well, again, he, Torino's already homered, uh, you know, singled early on in the uh, the series, the four game series, so he's playing deep. Adam Jones isn't. And then again, the second nice play. Buck Showalter talking uh, outstanding left fielder. And I was talking to Travis Snyder when Brady Anderson came over from the Red Sox. Johnny Oates was managing, and he put Brady in left field because he felt this that was the hardest position or field to play here at Camden Yards. Has the most room. Got to go down the line. We saw Lowe do that. You know, and Brady, even even if he was, you know, I think his lifetime batting average, I don't even remember what it was against lefties, but certainly not as much. But Johnny Oates says, I don't care. I'm going to put him in left field because he's going to save his games with his glove. And that's what Lowe's done tonight. A lot of room out there in left field here at Camden Yards. Odor bounces it foul off the top of the Orioles dugout. And again, that's the. Uh, Asset that David Lowe brings to this team. A well above average defender. And on championship contending teams, you need guys like that. You know, you, you have the, the debates a lot. Well, how many games is he going to win with this glove? Well, in a game like this with no score, how about tonight? There's Tanner Shepherds in the Texas bullpen, Brian Mattis for the O's. 
Well, David Lowe can, you know, we know he's an excellent pinch runner. I mean, not a base stealer, but pinch runner. And he's got some big hits for him this year. Rolls over on that big bouncer to Flaherty. Two down in the Texas eighth. Oreo Park is the perfect setting for your next group outing. So gather up your family, your friends, your co-workers, colleagues, and come on out and enjoy a fun-filled day or night of Orioles baseball. Now with discounted ticket prices for groups as small as 15, party facilities as many as a thousand, you could come and see a pitching change. As Darren O'Day is going to leave and Ryan Mattis is going to come on to face the lefty. So two outs, nobody on. Nice job for O'Day. On the matchup, last six appearance, a lot of strikeouts, only the one hit. And it coincided with the suspension, went down, worked with uh, Scotty McGregor, Brady Anderson, uh, a lot of fastballs, sliders, change ups. Of course, Moreland, uh, he's not one of those routine outs, 14 home runs, uh, two of them against left handers. There are the numbers for Brian early on, a lot of walks. And that has settled down. So you match up. And then you have Fielder already with a couple of hits behind, and then that's why you're going to get somebody up in the Oriole bullpen because Beltry, just in case anything happens here in the eighth. So here is Moreland 0 for 5 against Mattis, breaking ball, and he checks in time. So as Rowe now getting loose just in case he gets to Beltre. Yeah, so there is the right hander. Brian. Since coming back from the suspension, seven appearances has not allowed a run. And this is low for ball two. Well, you know he paid attention, and you know that he has a, a lot of power. You just again nothing, nothing game. Whether it's nothing, nothing, one, one, two, two, you, you just have to make your pitches, and that's why it's so difficult to come out of the bullpen. Two fifty-seven hitter against lefties. Much better against righties. Kind of hangs the slider, but he hangs it inside enough where Moreland doesn't pull the trigger. That's Out over the plate. That's a very hittable pitch. Interesting that a lefty pitcher would succeed better against the other batter, the righty. That ball's ripped to right field. Davis back, it's over his head, and bounces against the wall. Moreland is thinking to, and he puts on the brakes. He hit it so hard and Davis played it well, so there's a two out single. Now, even though it hit the bottom of the wall and skidded, I mean, no way. I mean, that was just a, a BB. That's what happens when you get into the hitter's counts. 2 0 fastball in the middle of the plate, and boy, he gets extended. And there's one of those balls, if you elevate it, it's 1 0, but it, it, it isn't. And Moreland picks up his first hit. Here's Fielder, who is two out of three. His League leading 34th multi hit game. And Hardy in the shift now on the second base side, Manny over where Hardy would be at shortstop. He's got 29 hits to left field, and he's only got 30 to right. 
The rest of them were up the middle. Now that's spraying the ball. Wow. Yeah, that'll get your attention. Well, I've never seen Van Brian Mattis do that to a left-handed batter. And way up and in, and boy, this is too close. You were very lucky. You never want to hit. You never want to be playing around the uh, the helmet. I can't imagine that makes Prince Fielder very happy. Yeah, fastball gets away and buzzes him up and in. Yeah, yeah that was a I'll show you cut. Swung That's through. Right. Uh, even more determined cut. Like he needs any impetus to do that. You know the hits by direction. Yeah, I mean it's good balance. Real good balance. But like we mentioned, uh, hadn't hit a what two home runs the last 21 games, but still hitting around 350. It's, it's very easy to overthrow when you come into these situations against these type of hitters. Well, the thing about Fielder that makes him so especially effective is his batting arm. Yeah. I mean, here, here's a power hitter. Struck out 39 times all year. That's it. A foul out of play. That'll be back in the crowd. Yeah, we have seen uh, Brian Mattis throw three fastballs in the inside part of the plate to a lefty. Very rarely does he do that. Usually it's a way, away, away. We saw him get Michael uh, Brantley out. What on the first game of that doubleheader on Sunday when Cleveland was in about as good a low and away fastball. As you could throw. A big pitch here, two and two, a two down, and Moreland at first. Just outside. And there's the eye you were talking about. Didn't even flinch. When you don't over try to overswing, it's easier to, to know the strike zone. And it appears to me the field is very content. Hitting the ball over the ballpark. And, you know, he's not one of these guys jumping out and trying to pull pitches. Harmony's going to hold the bag. Three and two. Moreland will be on his way. And it's inside ball four. And Fielder just flips the bat away. Well, he couldn't get Moreland out and he didn't get Fielder out. So I would imagine it's going to be Chaz Road time. So Mattis faces two batters, allows a single and a walk. And it's up to Chaz Road to keep this game scoreless. Chaz will come on. He inherits Moreland and Fielder two on two out in a scoreless game in the eighth. Came in, uh, Chu hit a home run off him. It looked like it was just a fly ball, and it just kept going, going left center. A 2 0. A lot of strikeouts, not a lot of walks. Been one of the better sliders on the ball club. Good numbers against both lefties and righties. And both home runs by left handers. Ortiz hit a slider to right, Chu hit the fly ball, and Orioles are hoping that number will be 13 for 13 as he comes in. 
with the potential go ahead run two outs here in the eighth at second base. Well, Beltre has never faced Chaz Rowe. It's a head on one. Yeah, good sinker. Good moving, sinking fastball. Beltre is 0 for 3 in the game. Slider. I went to. Well, not yet. It's a slider that, uh, I mean, just disappears. If you haven't seen this slider, especially that one, you think it's going to be on the plate. And then it just dives down and away. Chad Rowe, what about 6'4, almost 6'5? When he gets on top of it, it's devastating. He hung that one. Boy, did he get away with that pitch. Beltre's going, how did I miss that? I mean, this is the hit me slider. Starts inside and just hangs, and sometimes you get lucky. And he couldn't barrel it up. No. Could have been a very long three run home run. Oh, and two on Beltre, two on, two out. And he has a chase. Yeah, Beltre's a tough out, and we mentioned that it goes from the Dodgers, Seattle, and then over the Red Sox and signs a long term deal. It seems like, and his hitting is. Instructor was Dave Magadan, who's now with the Rangers. Taught him to hit the ball into right field. And when you get it up and out over the plate, that's what he does. Ground ball towards the hole. Manny's there, bobbles the ball, and everybody's going to reach. It was just off the end of his glove. Tough break there for Manny, and the bases are loaded with two down. Yeah, I don't know how they'll score it, but. That's usually a play that he makes and because he has such great range. He's off the line. You know the nice slider. That's the good one and not an easy play because he had to go get it. I mean you can see from this angle that's a long way. And uh, you know it's a play we, we see him make it so routinely you just take it for granted. But that angle there it wasn't routine. So the bases are loaded with two down. Here's Josh Hamilton. And a slow roller towards first that'll bounce foul. Hamilton is 0 for 1 against Chaz Rowe. That was the other night, Tuesday, and he struck him out. So each team in this game has had the bases loaded with two down. The Orioles did not score. We'll see what Texas does here. Upstairs with a fastball, good eye. Moreland, Fielder, and Beltre, third to first. Two and oh. Yeah, and all the hits by Josh Hamilton in the series are the other way. You know, been able to in, stay inside the ball, and right here he gets a great hitting count, and great hitting count because you have to throw a strike here. I mean, you don't have to, but certainly would like to. Two and one with two down, and the bases loaded. Let's see if Chaz can make a quality pitch here. Right center field. Davis on the run. Jones on the run. Adam gets there, and he makes the catch. And Rowe pitches out of it, and the Rangers leave the bases loaded. So on we go. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Still no score.
here the most consecutive series without losing a series the longest this season the Cardinals Nationals and Giants all have gone nine consecutive series the Orioles and this is active eight consecutive series that they have not lost it all began when they dropped three out of four in Houston to begin the month of June they then won a series at Cleveland came home one series from the Red Sox and Yankees and the Phillies then split a series in Philadelphia won a series in Toronto won a series at Boston and then swept the Indians over the weekend so they need a win here to get the split to keep that streak going to nine wait a minute are the Orioles in first place yes they are yes okay and that's how you do that the so Freeman stays on lefty lefty righty do up here in the eighth Flaherty is 0 for 2 and yeah, we showed you that numbers the lefties hitting Sam Freeman a little bit better than righties. But all you need here uh, you hope that maybe Freeman to get a little bit wide wild and then you uh, you play a little small ball score a run Zach Britton comes on does what he did last night which was strike out the side just get him out. Bouncer towards the hole. There's Odor. He was shaded that way, and he'll get Flaherty for the first out in the eighth. So Ryan is 0 for 3. Odor plays second base like Manny Ibar plays for the shortstop for the for the Angels. Very very quick. I'm not sure he has at this point. He's only 21. And the soft hands at Ibar. I mean Eric Ibar, Manny Ibar, Eric Ibar. There is a Manny Ibar, isn't there? Somewhere. Somewhere, yes. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> I'm here for you. So here here his is friends call him Manny. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you didn't know that. Fastball taken for a strike by David Lowe. David is one out of two. Taking a couple of base hits away with his defense tonight in left field. Takes another strike. Yeah. Well, Sam Freeman is. I'm trying to think who reminds me of him. There's the guy Rogelio Moret for the Red Sox. But he's got he's got some nasty stuff. Nice little acquisition. Because the Rangers just started the season without a left-hander in their their bullpen. Yeah, tonight they have an eight-man bullpen because they optioned Nick Martinez out today, the starter from last night. And Naftali Feliz is back. So it's an eight man bullpen in a four man rotation at the moment. One and two on low, one out, none on. Good take. Yeah, Matt Harrison, uh, he uh, pitched six innings of rehab coming back from uh, back fusion, all kinds of serious back problems. And so apparently he is going to be recalled and get a start. And then. If you were with us last night, Nick Martinez, Martinez only 24, so maybe back him off for a short bit of time. Do the what teams do? Give him a little respite. Yeah. Before uh, Buck Showalter's pregame press conference, I was sitting in the hallway talking to one of the uh, police officers down there, and Freddie Tyler, the visiting clubhouse manager, came by in a golf cart with a Texas Rangers equipment bag and a player. And I was like, oh, somebody just got called up. Two and two on low. Breaking ball inside ball three, and I, as the cart went by, I looked on the bag and it said Feliz, and there was Neftali. So, oh, he's back off the DL. And about five minutes later, Nick Martinez came out of the clubhouse with a suitcase heading for the airport. The players come and players go. From 0 and 2 to 3 and 2 on David Lowe. And a bloop down the left field line. Over there is Hamilton, and he can't get there, but it's foul. Yeah. And David Lowe. Outstanding in the field tonight, taking two base hits away. Yeah, one on a potential double. That ball was fair off of Elvis Andrews' bat. And then later on, comes in second line drive, very acrobatic. This is a real good at bat going here. Well, you'd like to get him on, and as we mentioned, does not really steal bases. Fast guy that really hasn't. Had the experience of stealing bases at a major league level, so what, one out of five? But if he does get on and then Machado hits one up the gap or loops one in, the speed to score. Line drive to center field. It's hanging, it's falling, it's a base hit. What an at bat for David Lowe. He has a two hit night. 
And on the eighth pitch, he gets on base, representing the go-ahead run. Yeah, that's what the three count, the three-two count does. Uh, you know, Sam Freeman, good stuff, but he's going to have to throw a strike. And David Lowe waiting. So Keone Kella is going to come on as David Lowe, representing the go-ahead run in the scoreless game, gets on. One down in the eighth in the scoreless game. So uh, Orioles went one for seven uh, first two games uh, with four strikeouts. He retired the first six and then Manny Machado who's going to step to the plane uh, hit a double. There are the numbers for Keone. So a young kid 12th round draft choice. And uh, turned 22 in April. He really does have a good fastball. We've seen up to 95 96 power hook. Hazy will throw the changeup. And we talked about Chaz Road 12 out of 12, 11 out of 13 isn't bad either. So the Rangers defense will go into the no doubles defense. They're so deep they almost need a ticket. Or Machado with outstanding speed at first. You know, you were talking about David Lowe and not having the knack yet to steal bases. It, it kind of reminds me of Bernie Williams when he came up at the Yankees. Blazing speed, but never did develop the knack of the first step to steal bases. Well, he was a uh, sprinter out of Puerto Rico and double play uh, ball. Yeah, routine. There's Odor. There's Andrews, and back to first for a double play. So on one pitch, that ends the potential rally. Base hit, none left. We head to the ninth. No score.
Orioles baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Folks checking out the team store as they walk on the concourse up on the club level. 31,915 here tonight. Well, largest that, crowd of the four game series. A little tote back. Tote bag, I think, night tonight. And it's a dugout club night. A lot of things going on here in Baltimore. Rose stays on and he'll get ahead of Chu 0 and 1. Andrews and Martin will follow. So home runs in three straight games after going 22 games without one. Fastball's too high. Jonathan Scope in his rehab game tonight at Frederick was two for four with two RBIs, including a solo home run. And Frederick won over Potomac 4 3. Strike on the corner. Chu does not like the call. Yeah, one of those backdoor sliders. I don't know if it's by design, but it's certainly yeah. maybe it's getting a little bit more in agreement. James Hoy yeah. done a nice job. Very consistent. Strike zone has not changed over the course of the game. Buck said that after the game last night, and I guess they do this as a matter of routine, there were five or six bang bang plays at first base last night, and Hoy last night was at first base. And they went back to look, and Buck said he was correct on every call he made on every bang bang play. 2 2 is a little low, ball three. Don't want to walk the leadoff man in a scoreless game in the well, night. Well, it's difficult because if it, you know, Chaz Rose paid attention and Chu's hit three home runs and he's hit them to all parts of the ballpark. So the degree of difficulty is you got to throw a strike, but you also have to keep it in the park. And he'll take walks. I mean that one even wasn't close, and that's of course what well, that's what they're looking for here in the ninth. Chu doesn't run a whole lot now, but uh, you know, years past, pretty speedy guy. Well, I'm sure with Andrews up, this will be a sacrifice situation. He's already laid down five sacrifice bunts on the year. They tried to do it uh, what last night? A horrible bunt, popped it up. Or was it the night before? Either way, the night before, yeah, the night before. Made the catch. yeah, exactly. Just did not drop the, you know, got the bat head way below the handle. Pops it up again, but straight back at the plate and back in the crowd. And yeah, there's the closer. Yeah, yeah, there is the closer, and you know, Bunning, and that's you know, until the DH, that's kind of the way you spent your games in spring training. That you go down and bunt, and you know, you do it. If you were a starting pitcher, you do it the day before. You get to hit the day you were actually going to pitch. It's about presenting the bat head to the ball, and it has to be out in front of the plate. Bat head has to be higher than the handle, and you use your legs kind of the, like an elevator to get you from low to high. There's a better one. And it's real good. Weeders will get it. He'll get it to Flaherty, so the sacrifice is successful. Yeah, so the angle of the bat was good. They do what they need to do. Well, Oriole Park is the perfect setting for your next group outing, so gather up your family, friends, coworkers, and colleagues for a day or night of Orioles baseball with discounted ticket prices for groups as small as 15 and party facilities to fit up to 1,000 fans. Oriole Park at Camden Yards can make your group outing an experience that you won't want to forget. Go online, orioles.com slash groups, or call 888-848-BIRD. The walk of Chu is the fourth allowed now by Oriole pitching, and so far they have not hurt. Leadoff walk in a scoreless game here in the ninth. Yeah, the Orioles have scored a couple, or walked a couple of times tonight. Well, they came in as a team at 237 with runners in scoring position. Tommy Hunter will get loose. Martin came in at 214. But of course, those numbers really don't mean anything. I mean, Rose wants to get him out. He wants to get a hit. Age old game. He's looking for a good pitch to hit. You're trying to not give him a good pitch to hit. Martin doubled against Rowe on Tuesday. A little bit low. Yeah, that might. It's it's Matt kind of. Caught it because of the sharpness of the breaking ball, maybe down a little bit. Because the pitch was that he couldn't present to the home plate umpire. So you don't get that pitch. 
can see it's right on the edge of the strike zone. And instead of one and two, it's two and one. And through the middle of base hit. Shoe will be sent. Here comes Jones. Here's the throw towards the plate. It is up the line, and Texas has the lead. The leadoff walk comes around the score. Yeah, Chu gets a great jump. And then the, the other problem is, is, I mean, look at that. He's off and running right here. Adam comes in. The throw's going to tail just a little bit. I'm not sure we, he could have cut it off, but there's no chance. So not only do they score, they get another runner in scoring position. So like I said, it doesn't really matter what his batting average is. If he gets a good pitch to hit, which he did, fastball in the middle of the plate, and then puts a good swing on it, that's how you generate runs. And he's batting 1,000 against Chaz Rowe. So the leadoff walk comes around the score and break the tie. And here is Chirinos. Rowe now needs to keep this to a one run inning. Tollison getting ready. He's been up the entire inning since Chu got on base. Now Martin is at second with one down. Yeah, he just worked the count, and well, there was a close pitch that maybe could have gone either way. It went his way. It's an amazing thing about this uh, the game. Martin was six for his last 56, and he could end up if they can maintain this lead or add on, maybe getting the game-winning hit tonight. And he gets to play because he can play center field. Foul ball one and two. For the Orioles in the bottom of the ninth, Paredes, Jones, and Davis will be up. Yeah, you really just, uh, you know, and you know, Chaz Rowe is going to bear down and try to get Torinos out. Got Odor on deck. You want to keep it at 1 nothing. You got the heart of your order coming up. 1 and 2 on Torinos, the number 9 batter. And he struck him out. Yeah, they had good life on that fastball at 94. Starts in the middle of the plate and just runs away from the bat head. So they play small ball, and to this point, it's worked. Okay. Walk, bunt, base hit. So Martin at second. Odor now up. Low, I guess, looked like it had the plate. Odor is one out of four on the night. Breaking ball in the dirt. The Orioles have been shut out four times this year. They have not yet scored here tonight. And they've also been held the one run 11 times. And they are one and 10 in those games. 3 and 0 on Odor. Yeah, you really can't give in to him. And as we mentioned, he came in red hot. I mean, 391 since the 15th of June. And then the problem, of course, you already had a double over the head of Adam Jones. You won't be swinging here with Moreland on deck, is that you have another guy, nine home runs, 25 RBIs waiting on deck in the month of June. There's Martin at second. RBI single with the second on the throw. Three and one on Odor. Strike two. Martin is not four, so he'll stay put. Fans getting behind Chaz Rowe. 
Three two is hit towards right field. That's a base hit. Coming towards the plate is Martin. Here's the throw home from Davis. It is up the line. Throw to second is not in time. And it goes off Hardy's glove. And trying to go to third and making it to third is Odor. Well, you see the speed factor for the Rangers. Martin gets a pitch to hit. Odor, 3 2 fastball in the middle of the plate, gets it to hit. And then uh, the Orioles don't hit the cutoff bin. Something they usually don't do. I mean, this is what happens in a nothing nothing game. You know, you think you can throw somebody out, and if you don't, which Jones didn't and Davis didn't, they they run you right into a scoring position. So the Rangers have the lead in the ninth. I mean, you can get it almost a little under 100 miles per hour. So the ERA went up because the last time he pitched was against Texas, and he did give up three runs, gave up three singles, and then a double. They all scored on a high pop fly double down the right field line here at Camden Yard. So 50 50 as far as ground ball sliders. Doesn't walk hardly anybody. And then again, keeps the ball in the ballpark. And that number a little higher than you would like. 13 it could be somewhere in the 25 30 percent range, if not lower. So the speedsters, two walks, Martin gets them in the north door, hits a 3 2 pitch, and Martin with great speed uh, able to score to make it two to nothing. So Moreland comes up with a chance for what would be a huge add on run. Tommy misses low 1 and 0. Well, you see what happens if Odor does what he's been doing. And again, they sent him out because he struggled. Now he comes back. He's hitting close to 400. He could, you know, better base stealer this year, five out of eight. So it gives him speed of being able to get on base. And he's walked. It's like he's a pretty agile second baseman. And then you kind of set up the whole lineup. You got a guy that. Hit nine home runs in the month of June, hitting second. Then you get Fielder, then you get Beltre, then you get Hamilton if he stays healthy. Get themselves a nice little lineup. Much better than a couple of months ago. Well, the speed component you mentioned, it's obvious in this inning. Chu can run. Martin can fly. Odor can run. Andrews, when he gets on, can run. And he skies it to shallow center field. Adam Jones moves in on it. And the inning is over. And the Orioles now come to bat. They have some work to do. Well, they do ups in the ninth. It'll be Paredes. It'll be Adam Jones. And it'll be Chris Davis. The O's need two to tie.
game. The fans are heating up behind us. The Orioles have to overcome a 2-0 deficit here headed to the bottom half of the ninth inning. And Dave, the Orioles have not had many opportunities in this game. No, they haven't. It was a, a well-pitched game, uh, obviously, by both starting pitchers. And even the relievers did a good job. Look, it was bound to happen to Chaz Rowe. But they're a bloop and a blast away from tying this thing up. <laughs> Well, I hear from the Orioles manager and others when we begin O's extra post game. But let's go back upstairs now. Bottom of the ninth, Jim and Jim. All right, Tom and Dave, and I like how Dave is thinking. You well, got the part of the lineup coming up here, and here's the closer they'll have to do it against, Sean Tolleson. Well, the Orioles have seen him twice in this series, so he got his first save on Tuesday, and that's the first one since the 19th. So three saves in his last 21 games, just because they really haven't been playing that well. And, but again, he's been pitching well. Only three earned runs last 21 games. So the ERA all the way from the mid fives to two, 267. Uh, you can see fly ball pitcher. So there you go. Get a bloop and then maybe a ball will get out of here. We saw, you know, he throws 92, 93. Nice little slider. Good change up, power change up. And the, for the Orioles, they first just try to get somebody on. I mean, it all starts with putting pressure on him. Maybe he'll make a mistake. And I would expect Paredes early in this count, maybe even on the first pitch, to jump on the first pitch to try to get on. Well, he's one of the great. Uh, we got some numbers today. I, you know, I'd look at him if we had a pitchers meeting. You'd say, okay, great first ball hitter. Doesn't mean you don't throw him a strike. You just try to make a quality pitch with it. I mean, right, that was just a fastball down the middle of the plate. It's a kind of a luxury to work with two run lead versus one if you're a closer. But again, as I, as I mentioned, things will change if you get a base runner on because you get the next three guys could hit the ball out of the ballpark. And then there's another strike. Well, the Orioles trail 2 0 here in the ninth. Here's what they've done recently since June the 4th. They have seven come from behind wins, 17 on the year, tied for third most in Major League Baseball, and since June the 4th, second most. That's what it will take here tonight. Breaking ball down and in. Paredes, by the way, has never faced Tolleson. Yeah, those are the come from behind. Let's see. Lead after eight. 12 and one. And there's a good fastball, but it's inside. And now that's a good take. Well, I don't I think he would have had trouble trying to hit that. You know, he's looking away, trying to protect in and but you're right. Didn't chase it. Would have been a tough pitch to handle. Upstairs, ball three. You know, if you remember, uh, the the game ended on Tuesday night when he struck out Brian Flaherty on a three-two back door slider. Fans getting loud at the ballpark. He's got a very good arm, but not a lot of experience. Loop to center field. Martin goes back on it and he has it for the out. So the all important first out here in the ninth inning. Drive of the game brought to you by Lexus of Towson, the area's number one volume Lexus dealer. Five years running. See why at LexusofTowson.com. And here it is, Leonis Martin. Yeah, Leonis hits it right back up the middle and uh, Chu had walked. And this a little ball sacrificed him over. And then, of course, on the throw. Martin would get the second and score in the old door, door base hit. So, a couple of big hits, the walk, the sacrifice. At least offensively, the uh, Rangers did a lot of things well in the ninth inning. Adam Jones, you, you saw him peek there right before Tollison came set, looking to see where Beltre is. Orioles need two to tie this, so that means a base runner. And Adam works on his bunting every single day in batting practice, every day. And he's surveying the uh, fielding. Fouls it back. And it's 0 and 2. The Tolleson goes 0 and 2 on each of the first two batters. Well, he's got a good enough fastball that he can challenge you with it. Good velocity. We saw some, uh, and he's got a you know, the slider and the changeup, the power changeup to go with it. Jones is 0 for 2 in his head to heads with Tolleson. Make it 0 for 3. Boy, he pinpointed the inside corner. Adam thought it was inside. Mm -hmm. 
what you call tanking the inside corner at 93 miles per hour. Blamed on waivers. So it's up to Chris Davis to keep it going. Beltre in the shift is hanging closer to third to try to take a bunt away from Davis. I mean, he, if Sean Tolleson, you're wondering how Texas got him on waivers. I guess he, he missed most of the last part of 2013, had a labor and problem with his left hip, and next thing you know, he's a Ranger. There's the changeup. The only Kello who got the double play on Machado to end the eighth would get the win if this holds. And Rowe would be the losing pitcher for the O's. High fly ball to left. Back on it is Hamilton. And in front of the wall, he will make the catch in a tough, tough loss for the Orioles as the Rangers with two in the top of the ninth inning win this game 2 0. And they get two, three out of four in this series. So the Orioles lose their first series since the first series of June. We hope you can join us tomorrow as the Orioles hit the road to begin a six game road trip. First stop, Chicago. Obaldo Jimenez will take them out against John Danks. Game one against the Sox. Coverage on Masson 2 begins at 7 30 with those extra presented by Jeep. And then game coverage at 8 o'clock. And now for Jim Palmer and our entire hardworking crew, Jim Hunter saying so long from Camden Yards where the Rangers win it 2 0. Tonight's telecast has been a Masson presentation. Those extra time of day presented by PNC comes your way right now.